Hobbit. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Yes, uh, uh, not a nasty, dirty, wet hole, nor yet a dry, sandy, bare hole. My hole was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. It had yes. a perfectly round door, painted green, uh -huh. which opened onto a tunnel-shaped hall, mm -hmm. with panelled walls and floors tiled and carpeted, and lots of pegs for hats yes. and coats. But and I'm very fond of visitors, do you see? And he was quite well-to-do. Uh, yeah, right. The long hall wound on and on, going into the side of the hill. And many little doors opened out of it. No going upstairs for the hobbit. <laughs> Bedrooms, bathrooms, cellars, pantries, lots of these. Kitchens, dining rooms, all were on the yes. same floor. Yes. By the way, uh, my name is, is Baggins, um, B-A-G-G-I-N-S, Bilbo Baggins. Um, at your service and your family's. Yes, I suppose and hobbits need some description oh. nowadays since they have become so rare. Hobbits are, or were, smaller than dwarves. Oh, yes, I mean, we, we may be smaller than dwarves, but at least we don't have those... Oh, silly bears. Yes, they're inclined to be fat in the stomach. Well built, oh, I think. Hmm? Very well, very well. They're inclined to be well built. <laughs> and dressed in bright colours, chiefly green and yellow. They wear no shoes because their feet grow natural leathery soles and thick brown hair like the stuff on their head, which is curly. Hmm. They have long, clever brown fingers. Good-natured faces. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> laugh, deep, <laughs> fruity laughs. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Which they have twice a day when they can get it. Yes, <clears throat> yes well, uh, my mother <clears throat> was the famous Belladonna Took, uh, one of the three remarkable daughters of the old Took, the uh, head of the hobbits who lived across the water. And she met my oh, father. Yes, yes, yes. There is little or no hmm? magic about them. But it has always been said that long ago, one or other of the Tooks had married into a fairy family. Ah. Once in a while, members of the Took clan would go and have adventures. Mm. It, not, of course, that Belladonna Took ever had any adventures. I mean, after she married my father. Although so. it is <coughs> probable that Bilbo got something a bit strange in his makeup from the Took side. Something that only waited for a chance to come out. One morning, long ago, in the quiet of Bilbo was standing at his door after breakfast, smoking an enormous long wooden pipe that reached nearly down to his neatly brushed woolly toes, when Gandalf came by. I saw an old man with a tall blue hat, a long grey cloak, a silver scarf over which his long white beard hung down below his waist, and immense black boots. The sun was shining, the grass was very green, and I was feeling extra friendly. So, all unsuspecting, I greeted the stranger cheerily. Good morning. What do you mean? Do you wish me a good morning, or hmm? mean that it is a good morning, whether I want it or not? Or that you feel good this morning? Hmm? Or that it is a morning to be good on? Well, uh, <clears throat> I'll learn all of them at once. <laughs> Um, if you have a pipe about you, sit down, have a fill of my tobacco. There's no hurry. We've got all the day before us. You may have all day, but I do not. I'm hmm. looking for someone to share in an adventure I'm arranging. And it's very difficult to find anyone. Oh, I should think in these parts. We are plain quiet folk and we have no use for adventures. <laughs> Nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things make you late for dinner. You, uh, you won't try over the hill or across the water. Good morning. What a lot of things you do use good morning for. Now you mean that it won't be good until you've got rid of me. No, no, no. Not at all. Not at all, my dear sir. No, no, no. Uh, let me see. I, I do think I know your name. Yes, 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 my dear sir, but I know your name, Mr. Bilbo Baggins. Who? Oh. I am Gandalf. Oh. oh. Gandalf, yes. Ga ah! Ga Gandalf! Good gracious me! Not the man who used to make such particularly excellent fireworks. I remember those. Oh, I do. I really, I was... I, I do beg your pardon. I, I had no idea you were still in business. Where else should I be? All the same, I'm pleased to find that you remember something about me, even if it is only my fireworks. <laughs> well, Indeed, uh... for your old grandfather Took's sake, and for the sake of your mother, Belladonna, I will give you what you asked for. Oh. <laughs> um, I beg your pardon? 
I, I, I haven't asked for anything. Yes, you have. Twice now. Mm -hmm. My pardon. Oh. I give it to you. Oh, In thank fact, you very much. Huh? I will go so far as to send you on this adventure. Very amusing for oh, me. Uh, no, 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 and no. very good for you. And profitable oh. too, very likely. If you ever get over it. If I ever get... Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no. no I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want any adventures. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, not today. Good morning. I have already... Yes, oh, but uh, please, uh, come to tea. Come to tea, you know. I mean, any time you like. Uh, why not come tomorrow? Yes. Yes, that's right. You you, you, you come to tea tomorrow. Hmm? Goodbye. Gandalf was left standing outside. After a while, he stepped up, and with the spike on his staff, he scratched a sign on the hobbit's green front door. Then, he strode away. The next morning, I had almost forgotten about Gandalf. I, I don't remember things very well unless I put them down on my engagement tablet. And the day before, I'd been too flustered to do anything of the kind. And it wasn't until just before tea time that I remembered. Oh, Gandalf! Tea! Hmm. Oh, I must get another cup and saucer. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, coming, coming. I'm so sorry to have kept you. Good I'm... afternoon. Dwalin, the dwarf. The dwarf, oh. At your service, excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, uh, hang your cloak on the peg. My, my name is uh, Bilbo Baggins, B A W G. Oh, yes, um, at your service. Is that tea ready in there? Uh, yes, I, I I was just going to... Oh, these cakes look delicious. I'll have one or two, if I may. Oh, uh, please do, please do. Have three, if you like. Uh, excuse me. Ah, good afternoon, Mr... G ah, oh. I see Dwarling's cloak hanging in your hall. Uh, I, I put my next to it, shall I? Yes, uh, There. Barlin, at your service. Uh, thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Barlin. Yes. Come in here and have some tea. A little beer would suit me better, yes. if it's all the same to you, my dear sir. Well, I... But I, I don't really... mind some cake, some seed cake, if you have any... Lots, lots. Uh, um, uh, go on in, yes. Thank you, sir. I'll... I'll, I'll... Oh, Gandalf, for sure, this time. Ah, but this must oh, be the house. Oh, the others here. Oh, well, uh, what, what, uh, what, what, uh, what can I do for you, my uh, dwarves? Keely, at your service. And freely. Oh, at yours and, and your family's. <laughs> Let us join the throng. The throng? I don't like the sound of that. Come on, please. Bring your clothes down. Ah, I can smell fresh cut bread oh, and butter. Oh, delicious. Another, another. Uh, yes. Nori, oh. at your service. Uh, Nori, at your service. Oh, yes. Nori, at, at, at your yours. service. Oh, in the door, side. Glory, at your service. Uh, uh, at yours and your... Uh, oh, well, I, I suppose I'd better get out some more cups and saucers and plates and knives. Oh, if that's more dwarves, I'll... Uh, Mr. Gandalf, come, oh, come, Bilbo, it's not like you to keep friends waiting on the doorstep and then open the door like a pop gun. Keep friends? <laughs> Let me introduce Before, Bofor and Bumbo. At, oh, yes. at your service. At your service. At your service. At your service, yes. Uh, 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 and especially Toreen Oakenshield. Uh, uh, Baggins. <laughs> Oh, uh, at yours uh, and your family. Well, shall we go in? I think we must be the last to arrive. The last? Yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, oh, I first get him to bother these dwarves. Uh, Mr. Gandalf, why have you brought all Bilbo, these... you must not speak disrespectfully of these 13 dwarves, especially of Torin. Oh? He is the great Torin Oakenshield, grandson of their last king under the mountain. Oh, Come, uh, then let us join the merry gathering. Uh, oh, yes. yes. Uh, Dwarves, Et, and Et, and talked and talked about mines and gold and trouble with goblins and the depredations of dragons and well, lots of other things which I didn't understand. I didn't want to. They sounded much too adventurous. <laughs> My appetite was quite taken away. That was a very good tea, Mr. Baggins. Best tea for weeks. Oh, thank you, man. <clears throat> I suppose you will all stay to supper. Of course. And after. Okay. Toreen Oakenshield, son of Thrain, gladly accept your kind invitation. <laughs> uh, we shall not get through the business till late, so uh, first let's have some music. Oh, yes. I trust you've all brought your instruments. Yeah. Yeah. Go get them. Come on, Please, carry me. Come 
right, now settle down, everybody. Settle down. Marlene. Are you ready? Now for our song. Misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old. We must away a break of day to seek the pale and Light they caught to hide in gems on hills of sword. The bells were ringing in the dale, and men looked up with faces pale. The dragon's eye fierce than. Laid low their towers and houses pray. As they sang, I felt the love of beautiful things made by cunning and by magic arise within me. A fierce and jealous love. The desire of the hearts of dwarves. Oh, it must have been something tookish waking up inside me. For I wished to go and see the great mountains. And, and to see pine trees and waterfalls. And to carry a sword instead of a walking stick. Through the window, I could see the stars in a dark sky. And I thought of the jewels of the dwarves in their dark caverns. Suddenly in the wood beyond the water, a flame leapt up. Well, probably somebody lighting a wood fire. And I thought of plundering dragons settling on my quiet hill and kindling it all to flames. Ugh. Where are you going, Baggins? Oh, um... What, what, what about a, a little light? We like the dark. Dark for dark business. And there are many hours before dawn. Oh, yes, uh, um, of course. Uh, of course. Yes. Oh. Oh, my oh, I'm, 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 I'm so, so, so sorry. Let Toreen speak. Gandalf, dwarves, um, <laughs> Mr. Baggins... We are met together in the house of our friend and fellow conspirator. Conspirator? This most excellent and audacious Audace. hobbit. Audacious? And may the hair on his toes never fall out. All praise mm. to his wine and his ale. Mm. Uh, we are met to discuss our plans, our ways, means, policy and uh, devices. Oh. To the estimable Mr. Baggins, and perhaps to one or two of our younger dwarves, the exact situation at the moment may require a little brief explanation. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we thank shall you. soon, before the break of day, start on our long journey. A journey from which some of us, perhaps all of us, mm. except our friend and counsellor, the ingenious wizard Gandalf, may never return. Never return? It is a solemn moment. Our object is, I take it, well known to uh, all of us. Who oh, oh, never return? Uh, Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Baggins, Mr. Baggins, he fainted. Stop my lightning! Stop my lightning! Stop my lightning! Stop my lightning! Excitable oh, little fellow gets funny fits, but he is one of the best, as fierce as a dragon in a pinch. Ha! Ah, but will he do? Do you think? Do what, Gloin? Well, 
It's all very well for you to say this hobbit is fierce. But one shriek like that in a moment of excitement would be enough to wake the dragon and all his relatives and then kill a lot of us. Yes. Hmm. I think, I think it sounded more like fright than excitement. As soon as I clapped eyes on the little fella bobbing and puffing on the mat, I had my doubts. Glorian, uh, let's have no more argument. Argument? All I want you to say is... You all asked me to find a 14th for your expedition, and I chose... Mr. Baggins. Ah, yes, yes. There is a lot more in him than you guess, and a deal more than he has any idea of himself. Oh. You may, or possibly, all live to thank me. But yet, if you just really think... let anyone say that I chose the wrong man or the wrong house, and you can stop at 13 and have all the bad luck you like, or go back to digging coal. No, no, no more no. argument. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, first of all, I, sh I should like to know a little bit more about things. Things? Yes, things. I, I mean, well, I mean about the gold and, 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 and the dragon and all that and how it got there and who it belongs to and so on. And further. Oh, bless me, didn't you hear our song? Haven't we been talking about all this for hours? Yes, well, all the same, your, 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 your um, Taurine, yes. I, I, should like, I should like it all plain and clear. I mean, I should like to know about risks and out-of-pocket expenses, time required, remuneration, so forth. Oh, very well. <laughs> Long ago, in my grandfather's time, our family was driven out to the far north and came to a mountain called the Lonely Mountain. There they mined and tunneled and made huge halls and workshops. And in addition, I, I believe they found a good deal of gold and a great many jewels, too. They grew immensely rich and famous. And my grandfather was king under the mountain and was treated with great reverence by mortal men of the merry town of Dale. It was undoubtedly the gold and jewels which brought the dragon to the mountain and to Dale. Dragons steal treasures wherever they can find them and guard their plunder as long as they live, which is practically forever. There were lots of dragons in the north in those days, and one was a most especially greedy, strong, and wicked dragon called Smaug. Yes, uh, Smaug. One day he flew up in the air and came south. The first we heard of it was a noise like a hurricane coming from the north, and the pine trees in the mountain creaked and cracking in the wind. We saw the dragon settle on the mountain in a spout of flame. And then he came down the slope, setting the woods all afire. By that time, all the bells were ringing in Dale and the warriors were arming. The dwarves rushed out of their great gate, but there was the dragon waiting for them. None escaped that way. After that, there were no dwarves left alive inside the mountain, and the dragon kept all their wealth for himself. The only ones to escape were those of us who happened to be outside at the time. Since then, we have had to earn our livings as best we could up and down the lands, often sinking as low as blacksmith's work, huh? and even coal mining. And even now, when I will allow we have a good bit laid by and are not so badly off, we still mean to get back our stolen treasure, huh? and to bring back our curses to Smaug, if we can. Yes, yes, well, a little light now. I think I want you all to look at something. I'll get a lamp. No need. My staff will serve the purpose. Uh, your, your staff? Certainly. Naren Edraethamen. Oh, isn't it clever? <laughs> it's quite extraordinary. <laughs> now, everyone, what do you make of this? Oh, it's a map of the mountain. It is indeed, Gloin, a plan of the lonely mountain. And it was made by your grandfather, Torin. Yeah, let me see. Uh, I don't see that this is going to help us much. I remember the mountain well enough and the lands around where the dragons bred. There is one thing about the mountain that you do not know, and that is the secret entrance. Uh, hmm? look, that? look at these runes marked here. Runes, Gunnar? The runes are the ancient letters of a half-forgotten language. Oh. Now, that rune marks the secret entrance to a hidden passage. So that's how my father and grandfather escaped from the dragon. How did you get hold of this map, Gandalf? Why did it not come down to me, the rightful heir? I did not 
get hold of it. I was given it. Your grandfather was killed, you remember, in the mines of Moria by a goblin. Curse the goblin, yes. And your father went away on the 21st of April, a hundred years ago last Thursday, and has never been seen by you since. True, true. Your grandfather gave this map to your father before he went away to the mines of Moria. Yeah? After your grandfather was killed, your father went to try his luck and recover the treasure. And lots of adventures of a most unpleasant sort he had. But he never got near the Lonely Mountain. And where did you find him? How he got there, I don't know. But I found him a prisoner in the dungeons of the Necromancer. Oh, no. I tried to save your father, Taurine, but it was too late. He had completely lost his wits and had forgotten everything except the map. The only thing your father wished was for his son to read the map. Now, I've shown you the secret entrance. It may have been secret once, but how do we know it's secret any longer? Old Smaug has lived there long enough to find out everything there is to know about those caves. That may be so, but what it says on the map, I should guess there's a closed door which has been made to look exactly like the side of the mountain. That is the usual dwarves' method, is it not, Taurine? Uh, quite right. Oh, uh, also, Taurine, I forgot to mention that with the map your father gave me this... Key. A key? Yeah. Oh, no. Take it. Aye, it is of silver and most curiously wrought. Is it the key to the secret door? Perhaps. Keep it safe. Indeed, I will. Now things begin to look more hopeful. We must get on and make some plans. At last. I think we should go east. As quiet and careful as we can as far as the Long Lake. After that, trouble might begin. That would be no good. Why not? It would be useless to face Smaug without a mighty warrior. I tried to find one, but all the warriors are busy fighting one another in distant lands. Oh? That is why I settled on burglary, especially when I realized the existence of the secret side door. And here is our little Bilbo Baggins, hmm? the burglar, the chosen what? and selected burglar. Burglar? If I say you are a burglar, a burglar you are or will be when the time comes. Oh, <laughs> oh very well then. <laughs> Supposing burglar expert gives us some ideas well, or I, suggestions. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, um... <clears throat> well, speak up, please. Huh? Oh, uh, <clears throat> well, don't you know, I think we've talked long enough for one night, if you see what I mean. <laughs> what about bed and an early start and all that? I will give you a, a good breakfast before you go. Before we go, you mean, Bilbo Baggins? Huh? Before oh. we go... I went to sleep with the dwarves' song running round in my head. It gave me very uncomfortable dreams. It was long after the break of day when the little hobbit woke up, put on his dressing gown, and went into the kitchen. Mmm. That's better. <laughs> I think, um, just, uh, just one more piece of toast, I think. And then... My dear fellow. Oh, gone down. Whenever <laughs> are you going to come? What about that early start? Early and start? Here you me. are, having breakfast or whatever you call it at half past ten. The well, dwarves left you the message something. because they couldn't wait. Message? What message? What are you talking Great about? Great, Oliphant, you want to tell yourself this morning. I can tell that you haven't dusted the mantelpiece. Dusted the mantelpiece? Oh. Huh. I, I, I don't know what that's got to do with it. I've had enough trouble with all the washing up for 14. If you had dusted the mantelpiece, you would have found this under the clock. Come on, Oh, a note. On my notepaper, too. <clears throat> Taurine and company to... Burglar Bilbo, greeting. For your hospitality and for your... offer of professional assistance, our thanks and grateful acceptance. Terms, cash on delivery, up to and not exceeding one-fourteenth of total profits. Hmm. If any, yes. All travelling expenses guaranteed, funeral expenses to be defrayed by us... And... Funeral expenses? By us? Or our representatives, if, if occasion arises. <laughs> Thinking it unnecessary to disturb your esteemed repose, we have proceeded in advance to make preparations and shall await your respected person at the Green Dragon in Bywater at 11 a.m. sharp. Trusting that you will be punctual. <laughs> we have the honour to remain yours, deeply Taurine and company. <laughs> that leaves you just ten minutes. You'll what? have to run. What? No what? time for it. Yes, but no I'm time for that either. Off you go. 
To the end of his days, Bilbo could never remember how he found himself outside without a hat or walking stick or any money. He left his breakfast unfinished, had pushed his keys into Gandalf's hand and found himself running as fast as his furry feet would carry him down the lane, past the mill and across the water. He had been very puffed I was too when I got to buy water on the stroke of eleven and then found that I was without my pipe and tobacco and without a pocket handkerchief. Right on time. Bravo, Mr. Baggins. We've just oh. finished loading the ponies. Oh, ponies? But I've never ridden a pony in my life. You'll thought... soon get used to it. Up oh. you get. Oh, no, no. Give him a hand, oh. Keegan. No, no, put it down. <laughs> oh, ah, oh. <laughs> oh. It's awfully high. It looks silly. I can fall off and hurt myself. Yeah, um, in any case, I'm, I'm afraid I, you know, I, I've left my pocket handkerchief behind and my hat, and I, I haven't got any money. Yeah, you'll have to manage without a good many things before you no. reach journey's end, my little friend. Oh, oh, as for a hat, I have a spare cloak and hood in my luggage. Oh, how convenient. Yes, yes Gandalf. Ah. Ah. Here you are, Silvo. Oh, my, my pipe, yes. And my, and my tobacco, yes. Very thoughtful of you, Mr. Gan Gan um, Gan Gan some pocket handkerchief. Oh. oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now, the adventure starts, my friends. Off we go. <laughs> yes, but where, Torin? Where, my little hobbit? Why, there and back again. Mm -hmm. Far over the misty mountains cold, through dungeons deep and caverns old, we must away every long day to seek the tale and count and go. Starts, my friends. Off we go. Yes, but where, Torin? Where, my little hobbit? Why, there and back again. Far over the misty mountains cold, through dungeons deep and caverns. And they rode along very merrily all day. Yeah, except, of course, when we stopped for meals. And although these didn't come quite as often as I would have liked, I began to feel that perhaps adventures weren't so bad after all. But after a time, they came to places where people spoke strangely and sang songs which Bilbo had not heard before. The roads grew worse, and inns were rare and not good. Also, the weather, which had often been as good as May candy, evening tales and legends, took a turn for the worse. Cold, hard ponies! <laughs> it's growing dark, my friends. The wind is rising. We shan't reach an inn for hours, perhaps not at all. So we must stop here for the night. Dismount, everyone! Where shall we get a dry patch to sleep on? Uh, we probably shan't, Barlin. We shall just have to make do. Perhaps Gandalf can help us. Where is he? I thought he was with you. Uh, Dwalin! Have you seen Gondal? No, Torin, I haven't seen him for two hours. Achille, Feely, Glowin, oh, any of you? Seen him. I wonder where he's got to. Just when a wizard would have been most useful, too. Torin, mm. over there, uh. through the trees, a light. Oh, 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 no. Where? Oh, yes, I see it. 
It, it looks like a fire. Maybe it's torches. No, it is a fire. Right, let's go and see. Yes, let's go. Oh, no, we're not. Look, I'm not going to sit here. Like I think Mr. Baggins ought to go and explore the lights. Yes, that's a very good idea. After all, he is the burglar. Yes. Gandalf said so. Uh, yes. Well, I, I, I know. I, I know he said so. But I, Good I idea, Barlin. Uh, Mr. Baggins. Uh, yes. You must go and find out all about that light and what it is for, and if all is perfectly safe and canny. Oh, but I really now, Scudlock, well, I'm not and come back I'm... quick if all is well. What? If not, uh, come back if you can. And if, if, you, I can, but I... if you can't, hoot twice like a barn owl, once like a screech owl. I don't know the difference between a barn owl and a screech And we will do uh, what we can. Off you go, Mr. Baggins. But I don't, I don't know how to hoot. I don't... But I, I don't know the difference. Get along there, Baggins. I can't hoot. I don't know... I don't know anything about it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. Mm, very well. Very well, very well. If Gandalf says I'm the burglar, I suppose I'm... I suppose I ought to be the one to go. Hmm. 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 Well, even if I can't hoot, at least I can move about quietly in the woods. It's one thing we hobbits pride ourselves on. We can move. Absolutely quietly. <laughs> and that dwarfish racket, you huh? <laughs> Ah. Now. Where's his light? Oh, yes, I can see it quite clearly now. It's definitely a fire with three... three creatures sitting round it. They look as if they're toasting meat. With their fingers? What are they? Shaped like huge men, but they've got great, heavy, ugly faces and strange shaped arms and legs. <gasps> oh, trolls. Uh, mutton yesterday, mutton today, and blimey if it don't look like mutton tomorrow. Uh, never a blinking bit of man flesh we've had for long enough. Yeah. Shut your mouth, Tom. Hey, Adios, what you about? William. Uh, You've had a village and a half between you since we come down from the mountains. Yeah. How much more do you want? Here, Tom. But uh, what is it, William? Don't look round. But just behind you, there's a little hand coming out from under the bushes. Just about to make off with one of our choices cuts. Looks as though it might be a pesky dwarf. A dwarf? <laughs> right. I'll count to three. And we'll jump in. One, two, three. Oh, 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 What's that then? You? Can you cook him? Ooh. You can try. No, nah, but he wouldn't make a bow a mouthful. Ooh. Not when he was skinned and boned. Oh. Perhaps there are more like him around and we can make a pie. Oh, no, please. Oh, please please don't cook me kind, sirs. I, I, I'm a very good cook myself, you know. And I I, I cook better than I cook. <laughs> if, you see what, <clears throat> if you see what I mean. <clears throat> Poor little blighter. Uh, let's let him go. Oh, yes. You're a fat fool, William, as I've said before yes. this evening. Oh, uh, well, you're a lout, bird Oh, am I? You hoo! Stand you and all! Uh, you won't let him go. Uh, 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 well, you are sweet this time. Come on, Tom. This, of course, would have been the time for Bilbo to leave, but his poor feet had been so squashed in the troll's big hand that he could only lie bruised and panting where he'd been thrown when the fight started, just outside the circle of firelight. Mr. Baggins, Bilbo, are you all right? Shh, quiet. Sounds Hello. like another of them. Where are you, oh, that's Mr. Baggins? Get him, boys. Get him. I'll get a sack. Right. Trolls! That's all, mad wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Here, bird, one tasty And so there were. As each dwarf came up to the fire looking for Barlin and Bilbo, a smelly sack was thrust over his head. 
Soon, dwelling lay by Berlin, Dory by Nori and Ori, Oin by Gloin, Bifur and Bofur by Bombor, and little Keely and Feely in one sack together both. I could only watch helplessly as even Torin succumbed to the troll's great weight and strength. Stand away! I am Torin! <laughs> That must make me hungry. Let's roast him now. Ah, take on now. I'm hungry. You've just had a great leave of mutton. Shut up, arguing. Hey, who's arguing? You are. You're a liar. Don't come on now, boys. We've had enough fighting for one night. I say we sit on the sacks one by one to squat them. <laughs> Let's do that now and then boil them in the big saucepan. Yeah, all right then. Who should we sit on first, yeah? Let's squash the last one first. He's the biggest. No, the biggest one that the blue stockings is was grey. They wasn't grey, Willem. They was yellow. Oh, yeah, you're right, Tom. They was yellow. And what did you say they was grey for? Hmm? I didn't. Who said they was grey? I never did. That was you. Uh, two to one, so shut your mouth. Who are you are talking to? Yes. Uh, the night's getting on, so let's get to it. The dawn comes early. Dawn, take you all and bestow to you. What's that? Is that a ring you make? <laughs> Here. Little girl, are you, are you hurt? No, I'm just a bit bruised and winded. Oh, I'll be all right in a few minutes. Uh, the, the dwarves are all, all tied up in their sacks. Yes, we, yes, we'd better let them out before they suffocate. Oh, another few minutes, we would have all been squashed and boiled. Bombo, wake up. You're out of your sack now. Out you come. There you are. And you. Come on, little ones. You're free now. But what happened to the trolls, Gandalf? Yes, well, what did you do? They, they seemed to turn to stone. That is exactly what did happen, my dear Bilbo. I thought everyone knew that for trolls, daylight is death. They must be underground before dawn, or they go back to the stone of the mountains they are made of and never move again. So well, it never. was your voice that made them keep arguing until the dawn came. Exactly, Marlene. I thought the impersonation very convincing, didn't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gandalf, yes? the trolls must have had a cave or a hole nearby to hide from the sun in. Quite right, Torin. We must look for it. Their track shouldn't be hard to find or follow. Torin! Gandalf! Hey. Over here! Oh, come on, everyone! Quick! Over here! This way! Over there! Over there. Come on! There! You can see the trail going up the hill. Aye! I'll lead with Barlin. The rest of you follow. Uh, Gandalf! Uh, Gandalf? Yes, my <clears throat> hobbit. Uh, don't, uh, please don't, please don't think that I'm criticizing, Mr. Gandalf, but uh, where did you get to during our encounter with these trolls? Yes, I'd like to know that too. Where were you? Looking ahead. And what brought you back in the nick of time, eh? Looking behind. Oh, yes, of course. Torrin, we found the cave. Oh, good, Good. Oh, you can see where the tracks lead right to the door. Ah, uh, but be careful, everyone. Make sure it's all clear. Excellent. Ah, let us go in. Uh, oh, hey, it's Mind big your name, Bilbo? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now. Ooh. 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 What a horrible smell. Yes, Look at all those buttons oh. and that food and ale. Oh. They are gold. Oh. Oh. Thousands and thousands of golden buttons. Oh. Oh. Look, look. These swords. They have jeweled hilts with the most beautiful scabbards. Oh. They look like good blades. Yes. They were not made by any troll, nor by any smith among men in these parts and days. I should know more about them if I could read the runes on them. Take them with you. I will. Oh, um, I wonder, could I have a... Um, they all look a bit big to me. Oh, this little one, this, this little knife, just the right size for me. I'll take that. What about the gold? Yeah, what about the gold? Oh, we can hide the gold in a safe place against our return. Now let us eat and drink our fill. That's a good idea. After which they slept, for their night had been disturbed somewhat, and their struggle with the trolls had made them very tired. 
Then they buried the gold, loaded up the ponies with fresh supplies from the trolls' bread and cheese and bacon and ale, and jogged along again on the path towards the east. The next few days were uneventful, but we began to feel that danger was never very far away. We forded a river, and from the top of the far bank, we looked down over a green valley, on the far side of which lay the misty mountains. You are now come to the very edge of the wild. Ahead of us is the fair valley of Rivendell, where Elrond Harvelvan lives in the last homely house. We are expected. Uh, is Elrond an elf? No, Bilbo, he is an elf friend, which is good enough for our purposes. Mm, it smells like elves. It is elves. <laughs> where? Where? Oh, you won't see them unless they want you to. Mm. Well, well, just look. Bilbo the Hobbit on a pony. Isn't it delicious? What's the star Thank you. <laughs> Have they nothing better to do than laugh at us? Well, I, 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 think they, I think they sound enchanting. We dwarves never really get on with elves. Elves are too full of themselves, if you ask me, just because they have more magic than us. <laughs> you are a little out of your way. If you are making for the only path across the water and to the house beyond, we will set you right. But you had best get on foot until you are over the bridge. Don't dip your beard in the foam, Father. There. <laughs> Magic yourself <laughs> all. Like Bilbo doesn't eat all the cake. Feckless elves! Be quiet, Tori. Oh. We shall soon arrive at the last homely house. Good night, good people. Valleys have ears, and some of you have over merry tongues. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, elves. Uh, you said that Elrond was an elf Oh, Bo Baggins, that curiosity of yours will end you in a lot of trouble one day. Oh, I'm really asking There are that. still some people who have both elves and heroes of the north for ancestors, and Elrond half-elven is their chief. He lives now in the last homely house, and never was there a more apt name. There. See? Ooh. There it is. Karin, knock on the doors. Welcome to my house. Enter. Elrond was as noble and as fair in face as an elf lord, as strong as a warrior, as wise as a wizard, as venerable as a king of dwarves, and as kind as summer. His house was perfect whether you liked work or sleep, storytelling or singing or just sitting and thinking or eating. The adventurers stayed at the last homely house for 14 days until Midsummer's Day. It was hard to leave. Bilbo would have gladly stopped there forever. Gandalf had still not been able to discover the meaning of the runes on the troll swords. So, on the eve of their departure, he asked Elrond what they might mean. These swords are not troll make. They are old, very old, made by the elves of Gondorin for the goblin wars. They must have come from a dragon horde or goblin plunder, for dragons and goblins destroyed Gondorin long ago. This sword, Torin, according to the runes on the hilt, is called Orchrist, the Goblin Slayer. It was a famous blade. Yours, Gandalf, is Glamdring. Glamdring? The foe hammer? Then this was once worn by the King of Gondolin himself. Indeed it was. 
war Christ and foe hammer, two ancient and powerful weapons. Keep them well. I will keep this sword in honor. May Orcris soon cleave goblins once again. I do not know that I altogether approve of the fierce love of gold which you dwarves profess. Oh. But Smaug must be destroyed ah. and the merry town of Dale avenged. So I will see if I can help. Show me your map, Thorin. Gandalf tells me it was made by your grandfather. Ah. Hmm. The plain runes indicating the secret door in the side of the mountain say, five feet high the door and three may walk abreast. Is there anything else that the map can tell us? I'm not sure. Let me take it to the window. Now then. Yes. I thought as much. Moon letters? Yes. Oh, what what's a moon letter? Moon letters, Bilbo, are runes which can be seen only when the paper on which they are written is held up to the moon. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Fortunately, there is a moon tonight. Yes, I see. But Bilbo. What you... The moon letters read, Stand by the grey stone when the thrush knocks, and the setting sun with the last light of Durin's day will shine upon the keyhole. Well, well what's Durin's day? <laughs> Durin was the ancestor of my grandpa. We call it Durin's day when the last moon of autumn and the sun are in the sky together. But this hidden message will not help us since it passes our skill nowadays to guess when Durin's day will occur next. Uh, it may not be for hundreds of years. That remains to be seen. Is there any more writing, Elrond? None to be seen by this moon. Now, my esteemed friends, let us watch the elves dance and make merry on this midsummer eve. There will be songs and speeches, and the people of the valley will outbid each other to do you honor and wish you good speech. It will hearten you for the next stage of your journey. Summer's morning held out as much promise as the night had been gay. Blue sky with never a cloud and the sun dancing on the water. Gandalf and the dwarves and burglar baggins took their leave of the fair people of Rivendell and started up the foothills of the ominous misty mountains. Long days after they had climbed out of the valley and had left the last homely house, they were still going up and up. It was a hard path and a dangerous path, a crooked way, lonely and long. Far, far away in the west, where things looked blue and faint, I knew that there somewhere lay my own country of safe and comfortable things, and my cosy hobbit hole. It became bitter cold, and the adventurers were comfortless and chill. Especially at night, when we dared not sing or talk too loud, for the echoes were uncanny. The silence seemed to dislike being broken, except by the wail of wind and the smashing of boulders down the hillsides, loosened, or so Gandalf said, by melting snows on the heights above. Look at those thunderclouds ahead, Thorin. The storm will be on us soon, and a great storm it will be too, if I am not mistaken. But a storm can't hurt us. Perhaps not, but it may well frighten the ponies. And you can't afford to have them running amok on this narrow path. Look at the drop. Yeah, that's Ooh. true. Also, the storm may bring the stone giants out. If we get in the way of one of their boulders, it'll be the end of you. Yeah, a a Balin! A Dwalin! Uh, go on ahead and see if you can find some shelter. Uh, perhaps there's a cave or even a cliff edge we can crawl under. <laughs> Oh, 
If we don't get blown off or drowned or struck by lightning, we shall be picked up by some stone giant and kicked sky high for a football. And I have a feeling that this storm has not come upon us by accident. You must get under cover as soon as possible. Karim, yes. Karim, we found a cave. Just around the next corner. It's big enough for all of us, even the pope. All oh, good oh, work. Good. Everyone follow Barlin and Dwarlin. Yes. It's a splendid cave. Yeah. Dry as a bone. Dude. And not too large and mysterious. Let's get right inside and light a fire. No. Yes. But we are cold and wet through. No fires be ruled by me. I will give you a light from my staff. Naren Edraethamen. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I'm so tired. Aye, Pili, and so are we all. Let us do as Gandalf says and rest. As soon as the storm passes over, we must all be on our way. <sighs> Let's hope that when the thunder and lightning goes, the stone giants will go to. We shall never get out of here. that there was a crack in the wall at the back of the cave, which got bigger and bigger, opening wider and wider, and I was, I, I was too frightened to cry or to call out. Oh, dear. Oh. What's that? What's that? Oh, there is a crack. It's as wide as a passage. My dreams come true. Or was it a dream at all? Oh. Where are the ponies going? Oh! Take them alive! Take them alive! Struggle all you want to, dwarves! You are outnumbered six to one! Take them inside! Close the door! Oh, anyone through? Everyone through! Get along, Bob, and hurry! Four goblins the bastard take him prisoner when he when he raised his staff. There was a uh, oof, there was a blinding flash, and the goblins fell dead. Uh, ah, good. But what happened to Gandalf? I don't know. He just he just vanished. Uh, vanished? Where to? I don't know. Oof, I don't know. Oh, Gandalf, oh, Gandalf, where are you? Oof, oh, where are you? <laughs>
Gandalf. I don't know. I just saw four goblins rush to take him prisoner. When he, when he raised his staff, there was a... Oh, there was a blinding flash. And the goblins fell dead. Ah, good. But what happened to Gandalf? I don't know. He just... He just vanished. <coughs> vanished? Where to? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Gandalf. Oh, Gandalf, where are you? Oh, oh where are you? <coughs> The goblins hurried Bilbo and the dwarves along with shouts and insults and cracks of the whip. Down and down they went into the heart of the mountain, where it was stifling, hot and stuffy. And the goblins were very rough and pinched unmercifully. Oh, oh. Bilbo was even more unhappy than when the troll had picked him up by his toes. Oh, oh, I wish I'd never left my hobbit hole. It was a deep, deep dark, such as only goblins can see through. Here, the passages in the depths of the mountain were crossed and tangled in all directions. But the goblins did not hesitate or stop for one second. Now there came a glimmer of red light, which became stronger and stronger, until at last the dwarves stumbled into a vast cavern with torches round the walls and a great red fire in the middle. The cavern seemed to be filled with hundreds of the hideous creatures. While in the shadows, on a raised flat stone, surrounded by ferocious-looking guards armed with axes and bent swords, sat a tremendous goblin with a huge bloated head. Oh, who are these miserable persons? You are so great, goblin! <laughs> Oh, oh, I found them sheltering in our front porch, almighty oh, one. Our front porch? What do you mean by it? Well, I, I was only going to... Who are I... you? Murderers and friends of elves, not unlikely. Yes. Yes. Come, what have you got to say? Not that it will do you much good. Oh. I know too much about you and your folk already. But let's have the truth. Or I will prepare something particularly uncomfortable for you. I, I am Colleen Oakenshield, the dwarf at your service. We were on a journey uh, uh, to visit the, uh, the descendants of our grandfathers who live on the east side of these truly hospitable mountains. He is a liar! Oh, truly tremendous one! Several of our people were struck by lightning in the cave when we invited these uh, creatures to come below. Uh, and they are as dead as stone. Uh, uh, also, he has not explained his sword. Sword? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, Chris! Oh, Chris! Oh, Christ. The goblin cleaver, the lighter. This accursed sword has slain hundreds of my people. You murderers and elf friends. Slash them, beat them, bite them, kill them. What's happening? I can't see. The fire and the torches, they seem to explode in all directions. The sparks, all the sparks are burning up the goblins. Yes. Hear those? I can see a sword gleaming in the dark. Yes, yes, I can see it. It's floating in the air. There's nobody holding it. It's making for the great goblin. Ah! It's cutting clean in two. Follow me quick. Follow the sword. It's Gandalf. He's invisible. Follow the sword. Yeah. Well, are we all here? Oh, I'll light my staff so that we can see. Naren Edrai Ethamen. Now, Tarin. By your side, Gandalf. Good. 
that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes. Well, where, where are Keely and Feedy? Here we are. Here we are. Oh, that makes thirteen. <coughs> oh, and Mr. Baggins, fourteen. Yes. Uh, Mr. Gundalf, well, where were well, you? It when might be worse, go? and then again oh. it might be a good deal better. No ponies, we shan't see them again, oh. and no food. Oh. No, no food? knowing quite where we are, oh. and hordes of angry goblins just behind us. At least I've rescued our Chris Gundalf. See, I glows, just like your sword glambering. That is a warning, Turin. Oh. The brighter those swords glow, the nearer the enemy. Oh. Come, oh. on we go. Yeah, no no time for exclamations. Hurry! And on they went. They began to hear goblin noises and horrible cries far behind. And it soon became clear that the goblins were quickly gaining on them. Oh, Mr. Gandalf! Mr. Gandalf! Mr. Gandalf! Oh, Torin! Please! Yes. What is it? I can't run as fast as you. Oh, well, then we'll just have to carry you up. Bombo! Oh, no. You take him first. Oh, come on, Mr. Baggins. Up you get! Oh, my! Oh! 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 oh. oh. Why did I ever leave my hobbit hole? Now, quickly, all of you. The goblins are on us. Come on, You and I will draw our swords. Your twist and blundering will keep them at bay while the rest of you try and get away. Our friends, goblins, be mine! And well named were those two magic swords by the ancient high elves of the West who wrought them. They hewed and hacked at the goblins until the evil creatures were driven off. And it was some time before they dared turn that corner again, by which time the adventurers had gone on, a long way on into the dark tunnels of the goblins' realm. As soon as the goblins realized where their prey had gone, they put out their torches, slipped on soft shoes, and chose their very quickest runners with the sharpest eyes and ears. These ran forward as swift as weasels in the dark, and with hardly any more noise than bats. Yes, and that's why none of us, not even Gandalf, saw or heard them coming. But we must have been seen by the goblins coming up behind, for Gandalf was letting his wand give out a faint light to help us as we went along. Quite suddenly, Barlin, now at the back carrying Bilbo, was grabbed from behind. <laughs> As Barlin fell, the hobbit rolled off his shoulders into the blackness, bumped his head on hard rock, and remembered nothing more. When Bilbo opened his eyes, he wondered if he had. What? Huh? For it was just as dark as with them shut. Oh, yes. Yes, and just imagine my fright. I could hear nothing, I could see nothing, and I could feel nothing except for the stone of the floor. Very slowly, I got up and groped about on all fours till I touched the wall of the tunnel. My head was swimming. There was no sign of Gandalf or the dwarves, and I was far from certain even which way we'd been travelling. Still, I guessed as well as I could, and I crawled along for a good way, until suddenly my hand met on the floor of the tunnel what felt like a little tiny ring of cold metal. It was a turning point in the Hobbit's career. Not that he knew it at the time. He put the ring in his pocket almost without thinking. Certainly it did not seem of any particular use at that moment. He did not go much further but sat on the cold floor and pondered. I thought of myself at home, frying eggs and bacon in the kitchen. But that only made me miserable, for I could feel inside that it was high time for some meal or other. How could I have been left behind? How did the goblins miss me? I must have been lying unconscious out of their way. What if the goblins came back? But then Bilbo remembered the sword he had taken from the troll's lair. Ah, it glows. So this is an elvish blade, too. Its light's only pale, so the goblins are not very near. Yes, and yet not far enough away. Still, gives me a little light to see by. Now, what shall I do? Go back? No, no that's no good at all. Go sideways? Oh, <coughs> no, impossible. Um, go forwards, the only thing to do. <laughs> uh, on we go. So? With his sword held in front of him and with one hand feeling the wall, he groped along, fearful but determined as only a hobbit can be when his mind is made up. 
The tunnel seemed to have no end. On and on he went, and down and down, not daring to stop. On, on, until he was tireder than tired. It seemed like all the way to tomorrow and over it to the days beyond. Suddenly... Oh, 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 water! Oh, and icy cold! This must be a pool or a lake. Or is it an underground river? Well, now what do I do? It may not be very deep and I might be able to wade over to the other side. Whatever that is. But if it is deep, I can't swim. Oh, dear. I, uh, well, I am uh, Mr. Bilbo Baggins, B-A-W-G-I-N-S. I, I've lost the, the dwarves and I've lost the wizard and I don't know where I am and I don't want to know. If only I can get out of here. Shh, shh. Perhaps he sits here and chats with it a bit, see, my precious. It likes riddles. Perhaps it does, does it? This strange creature wanted to appear friendly, at any rate for the moment, until he found out more about the hobbit. His name was Galoon, although he always called himself Precious. He was small and slimy and as dark as darkness, except for two big, round, pale eyes in his thin face. He lived on fish, and goblin too, when he could get it. He could see that Bilbo was no goblin, but Galoon was always very hungry. When he said he wanted to play riddles, Bilbo was anxious to agree until he found out whether this odd creature was fierce or friendly or whether he was in league with the goblins. Riddles? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, very well then. Uh, you ask first. Goodness. What has roots as nobody sees is taller than trees. Up. Up it goes, oh, and yet never grows. Oh, yes, well, that's very easy. <laughs> A mountain. <laughs> Does it guess easy? <laughs> it must have a competition with us, my precious. A, a, comp a competition? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yes, well, all right, uh, provided that you show me the way out of this place afterwards. If Precious asks and it doesn't answer, we eat it, my Precious. Oh, if, it's me. If we don't answer, then we does what it wants, eh? We shows it the way out, yes. Well, uh, yeah, I... I, I... <clears> there <throat> doesn't seem to be very much else for it. Let's uh, eat me. Oh, dear. Yeah, very well. <clears throat> now, uh... Uh, yes, now let me see. Mm, try, try this one. A uh, box without hinges, key or lid, yet golden treasure inside is here. Very easy, very easy old chestnut, you know. Box without hinges, is yes. golden treasure. Gold. Gold. Now, oh, come on. Come along, let's have your answer. Now, precious turn, precious turn. Yes. This thing all things devours birds, beasts, trees, flowers, yes. gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to meal, slays king, ruins town, and beats high mountain down. Oh. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's a hard one. Oh, uh, uh, perhaps you're uh, um, a magician. No. Oh, no, oh, dear. It definitely wants to eat me. I must think. I must think. Oh, I have more time. Time. If I... hmm? It's guessed it. Oh, have I... oh time, yes. <laughs> No more riddles is. No more. No, no, all right, certainly. I'm I'm rather tired of that game, too. Uh, but now, do you think you could show me the way? It's hmm? got to ask us a question, my precious. Oh, but I just asked you. Yes, yes. Just one more question. Well, I, 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 I just can't think of anything. 
Shh. The same pill. Uh, something. I think something, something. Um, what have I got in my pocket? Um, not oh. fair, oh. my precious. Well, not fair to ask us what it's got in its nasty little pocket, sis. Well, uh, <laughs> oh. <clears throat> well, uh, all, all right. Um, yes, what have I got in my pocket then? Shh. It must give us three guesses, my precious. Yeah, well, all right, go on then. Guess away. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what's it got in its pocket? Hanses. Wrong. <laughs> Guess again. Not Hanses. <laughs> what can nasty Bagginses have in its pockets? <laughs> hmm. What have I got in my pockets? My pockets. A knife! A knife! A knife! Ah. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong. <laughs> Last guess. <laughs> Come along. Come along, time's up. String no. or nothing. Ah, 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 now, that's not fair. You work two guesses in at once. Anyway, they're both wrong. Well? Well? Well, what about your promise, then? Hmm? I want to go and you must show me the way. It must wait. We can't go up tunnels, they're so hasty. We must go and get some things first. Things? Yes, things to help us. Yes, well, all right. Well, hurry up, then. We must get our birthday present. <laughs> Let it wait there till we get our birthday present, precious. Oh, goodness, it's gone. I don't think he means to come back. All that talk of things to get and a birthday present, just excuses to get away. But Bilbo was wrong. Gollum did mean to come back. He was angry now and hungry, and he was a miserable and wicked creature, and he had a plan. He paddled out to his island, where in a hiding place he kept a few wretched oddments, and one very beautiful thing. Very beautiful, very wonderful. A golden ring, a precious ring. How he had come by that ring ages ago in the old days, when such rings were still at large in the world, perhaps even the master who ruled them could not have said. Not its business. It's lost. Oh. Yes, well, well, so am I, you see. And I want to get unlost. <laughs> yes, and I, and I won the game, you know, and you promised. So come along. You come along and let me out, and then you can go on with your looking. No. No. Not yet. Such for it. Yes, but... It's lost. It's lost. Yeah, but you never answered my last question. And you, and you did promise, you know. But it's lost. Shh. He's coming back. He just sounds very, very upset. What oh, has yes. it got in its pocket? Yes. What, I wonder, what have I got, I wonder? Oh, well, it's just that ring. Ooh. Oh, it feels very cold on my finger. Shh. Oh, his eyes. Oh, it's huge. Shining like green fire. Go! 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 Oh, goodness. He means to murder me. He's going to kill me. It mustn't run away. We catch it. Precious. We catch it. Terrified, Bilbo tried to run faster as he heard Galoom's hiss close behind him, but suddenly he struck his toes on a snag in the floor and fell flat with his sword under him. He's gone past. Well, how could he have missed me? Well, he has, and that's a good thing. 
Yes, but what now? No good going back to the lake. He's bound to return there sometime. I suppose I'd just better follow him. Perhaps he'll lead me to some way of escape. Curse it, curse it, curse the vacancies. It's gone. Oh, 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 oh. my guesses, my precious. He's found it. My birthday present. How do we lose it, my precious? It must have been when we came this way last. When we twisted that tasty young goblin. Yes, that's it. Curse it. It slipped from us after all these ages and ages. It's gone. The ring. That's what he must have lost. But why does he want it so badly? The Bagginses has got it in his pocket, says. The nasty nose has found it, we says. But he doesn't know what the present can do, does it? Yes, it doesn't know. But it's Trixie. Yes, supposing the horrid goblins catch it. Goblins. If they get it, they will get the present. Our precious present. They'll find it and they'll find out what it does. One of the goblinses will put it on and then no one will see him. <laughs> Not even our clever ice will see him. And he'll come creepsy and tricksy and catch us. <laughs> It's a magic ring. <laughs> well, it's made me invisible. That's why he rushed straight past me when I fell. Then let's stop talking, precious, and my taste. The Bacchanses might find a way to the back door. Yes, that's it. The back door. My taste. Haste, 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 haste. The back door. Well, maybe I can get out there. If this ring really, really does make me invisible, it, it should be easy. <laughs> I suppose I'd better follow this smelly creature. I'd much rather be going away from it. The further they went, the slower Galoom walked. He began to get shaky and weepy. Goblins might be about, and he had lost the ring. At last, he stopped by a low opening in the left-hand side of the passage. Yes, yes. Yes, here's the passage. But we doesn't go on, precious, no. Goblins is down there. Lots of goblins is. Shh! Oh. What shall we do? We must wait here, precious. Wait a bit and see. He's sitting right in front of the opening. Oh, I can see his great shining eyes. How can I get past him? Shh! Oh. The nasty Baggins is here and wants to get out, but we won't let it, my precious. We'll catch it and we'll squeeze it. Mm. And we'll get our birthday present back. Go! Go! Oh, I, I must get out. I must get out of this horrible darkness while I've got any strength left. I, I, I'll kill it. I'll kill it with my elf blade. I'll... Oh. But a sudden understanding... A pity mixed with horror welled up in Bilbo's heart. A glimpse of endless days without light or hope. Hard stone, cold fish sneaking and whispering. He trembled. And then quite suddenly, as if lifted by a new strength and resolve, he leapt. Straight over Galoom's head he jumped. Seven feet forward and three feet in the air. Too late, Galoom sensed what was happening. He threw himself backwards and grabbed. But his hands snapped on thin air, and Bilbo, falling fair on his sturdy feet, sped off down the new tunnel. Thief! Thief! We hate it. We hate it forever. It's taken our present. Come back, Parkinson's. Come back. Cross it and crush it. Shh! Shh! We hate it. Shh! We hate it forever. Scuttling as fast.
fast as his legs would carry him, Bilbo turned a corner and came suddenly into an open space where he saw, with a wave of relief that left him almost dizzy, a ray of bright sunshine streaming through a great stone doorway. Oh! Oh! Blinking in the dazzle, Bilbo failed at first to see the guards, goblins in full armor and with drawn swords. An enemy! They can see me! Whether it was an accident or a last trick before he took a new master, the ring was not on his finger. The ring. The ring. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh. Where is it? Go back up the passage. That way. Look out for the door. Draw your clothing. Yes, get there at once. I must get out. I must get out. I said close that door. Quickly. Unless you want to be fed for the spider. I must get through that door before it closes. There don't seem to be any sign of the creature, Captain. It's almost shut. Nearly there. Now I just... I think I can just about squeeze through. Oh, oh. I'm stuck. My coat buttons are caught on the edge of the door. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh, no. What's stopping it? There's a shadow there. Something's trying to get out. They can see my shadow in the sunlight. Where was I? The sun was shining brightly and the air smelled clean and fresh. But I'd no food, pony, hood, cloak, no buttons on my coat, and not the slightest idea which way to go. Nor had I any friends. I was still quite alone. So, trusting to his luck, which hadn't been too good up to then, Bilbo took off the magic ring and began to walk in the first direction his fancy dictated. As he wandered on, the sun began to sink behind the mountain. Good heavens, the sun sets in the west, so I must be to the east of the Misty Mountains. <laughs> I must have walked right through them, right to the edge of the land beyond. Oh, the land beyond. Oh, where, oh, where can Gandalf and the dwarves have got to? Oh, perhaps now that I've got the magic ring, I, I ought to go back into those horrible tunnels and look for them. Yes. Yes. There's nothing else for it. I must go back. What's that? Voices? Coming from behind those bushes. I'll creep nearer, see who they are. They might be friendly. <gasps> oh, thank goodness, it's the dwarves. <laughs> I'll put the ring on. It'll give them all a surprise. Here I am. Look! There he is. Inside here, Bilbo. Where did you get to and where did you spring from? Yeah, ah, well, that's a little secret. I told you there was a lot more in our burglar than you guessed. Tell us your adventures, Bilbo. What happened to you after we lost you? How did you get to this spot? Well, you see, after I fell off Marlin's time now, we must be getting on. The goblins will be out after us in their hundreds when night falls, and already shadows are lengthening. You can tell us your tale on the mark. As they plodded onward, the dwarves plied Bilbo with question after question about his adventures. He told them over and over again everything he could remember. Except about the finding of the ring. But Gandalf gave me more than one strange look from under his bushy eyebrows, and I remember wondering if he had guessed that part of the tale without my saying. 
The way grew rough and treacherous. And at one point, the whole party found themselves slithering helplessly down a long, steep slope of fallen stones, the remains of a landslide. The sun had long gone down behind the mountains. The company limped along as fast as they were able. And all the while, the forest gloom got heavier and the silence deeper. Suddenly, they came to a clearing where the bracken ceased and the pine needles were thickly carpeted upon the ground. Can't we rest here? Must we go any further? I'm dreadfully hungry. What's that? Wolves? Rather worse, I'm afraid. The evil wolves of these parts are called wags. We must climb the trees. All of you, the quick! Trees, up the trees! But I can't. I'm only a little hungry. Come on, Bilbo. Come on, Bilbo. Come on, Bilbo. Come on, Is everyone safe? Mm. Oh. I think so. <coughs> yes, yes, all are safe for the time being. Oh, safe. Gandalf, we, we can't stay perched in trees forever. And look, there's, there are hundreds of them. Be quiet, and we may discover something to help us away from here. Look, in the middle of the clearing, hmm? there's their leader, the great grey wag. We chase them up those trees. What strangers? A pack of dwarves, my lord. And a thing like a man with a long beard. And a smaller thing. And a, a, a smaller thing? Is it an elf? Oh, not an elf, my lord. We don't know what it is. We've never seen one before. Are the goblins here yet? No, oh, great grey one. Not here? Why not? We don't know. Oh, mightiest of prowlers. We haven't seen hide or whisker of them. Well, find them, you tillies. We shall find them. At one so skirt of the forest. I'll deal with the strangers later. You will soon have your chance to tear them and slice them and devour them. This is serious. Very serious indeed. But what should we do, Gandalf? I mean, how shall we ever escape? Our uh, only chance, I think, is fire. Fire? Yes. Wags are mortally afraid of fire. You two, collect as many pine cones from this tree as you can, and I'll set light to them with my staff. Quick! Now then. Here you are. Yes, a big one. Good. They're dry and should catch light easily. There. Oh, I think the great grey one <laughs> should have the first honour of being the first target. Ah! Good shot, Gandalf! You've got him right on the nose! Yes, let's see what a few more fiery cones can produce. Here are them. Oh, 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 yeah, here's a present for you. Put this in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Look! The coats are on fire! They're sending a light to each other! They're running away! And there are still far too many of them unharmed for us to think of escaping yet. We'll have to... Look! Look! Through the trees! There! Goblins! As I feared, we were too late. The goblins have arrived. What's going on, Gandalf? What are they doing? Holding a council of war, I should imagine. Yes, I thought so. Goblins, unlike wargs, are not afraid of fire. Oh. See? They're putting dry fern and brushwood round our trees. Oh, They're going to make bonfires of us. Oh, no! Up you go. Then let yourself be carried away. Up you. Whoa! 
The Eagles! The Eagles! I can't! I can't. Come on, Bilbo, come on! Come on, on brave burglar! Let us up! Let up! No, no. There you go! The flames are nearly on us! Ah, you're the last! You're the last! Last is closed, Bilbo! It's your only chance! Ah, hold on! Farewell, goblin! So the band of adventurers was borne away to freedom and to safety. As they flew on, the pale peaks of a mountain loomed ahead, with spikes of rock sticking up out of black shadows. At last, the great eagles deposited their passengers safely on a wide ledge of rock, halfway up the sheer precipice which seemed to form one whole side of this inhospitable-looking mountain. Where are we, Gandalf? Are the eagles friendly? I mean, uh, oh, will they be... one question at a time, my dear Bilbo. First, we are on the great shelf, the home of the Lord of the Eagles. Oh. And secondly, yes, they are friendly. Oh. They aren't always, I might tell you. But it so happens that I once healed the Lord of the Eagles from a very nasty arrow wound. Quiet. Here he is now. Show the greatest respect. What a pleasant surprise to see you again. Quack! I am honored, Lord of the Eagles. May I present Torin Oakenshield, son of Thrain, son of Thraw, and his followers. Son of Thrain, son of Thraw! It is a great pleasure to meet the head of such a famous family of goblin slayers! Gandalf, my friend! You must tell me where you have come from and where you are going to, and what is your mission. Quack! It was as well one of my patrols spotted the fires from afar, was it not? Quack! Indeed it was. We all owe our lives to you and to your eagles. But b before I tell you of our adventures, may I crave one more favor? You have but to ask. Can your eagles take us where and as far as you will? In which direction? Eastward. Ah! Eastward? Great wind. Your quest must be an important one indeed for you to wish to go eastward. Ah! We will carry you to the Karok, but no farther, Gandalf. There are too many perils beyond that point, even for eagles. Ah! Good for the travelers, my lord. Ooh, ooh, good. Eat your fill, then you must rest for tomorrow's journey. The following morning, they bade a courteous farewell to their hosts who had treated them so kindly, and again were carried aloft this time on the backs of the eagles, which was a good deal more comfortable and less frightening, although at least one member of the party still found it not at all to his liking. I just shut my eyes and held on as tightly as I could. After a good while, the eagles spied the Karok and began to go down in great spirals. The Karok was a rugged hill of stone sticking up out of a plain of wide grasslands and with a river meandering round its foot. Quickly now to the top of this rock, the eagles swooped one by one, and set down their passengers. The wind under your wings bear you where the sun sails and the moon walks. Farewell. Farewell, my lord. Goodbye. Farewell. Ah! Ah! Uh, what now, Gandalf? Very few people live in these parts of the land beyond, but there is somebody that I know of who lives not too far away. It oh? was he who named this hill Karak. And it was he who carved out those steps down to the plain. He doesn't come here often, certainly not in the daytime, and it is no good waiting for him. In fact, it would be very dangerous. Why, why? We must go and find him 
And you must all be very polite when I introduce you, which I shall do slowly, two by two, I think. And you must be careful not to annoy him, or heaven knows what will happen. Why? Because he can be appalling when he is angry, though he is kind enough when humoured. Mm. Still, I warn you, he gets angry easily. Is this the person you are taking us to It now? is. Uh, couldn't you find someone more easy-tempered? No, I could not. Uh, I, I think, Gandalf, you'd better explain it all a bit more clearly. If His name understand. is Bjorn. He's a skin changer, which is to say he changes his skin. Sometimes he is a man and sometimes a, an enormous black bear. Some say that he's descended from the ancient bears of the mountains that lived there before the giants came. Yes, but what's this? And, person? Bilbo, he is not the sort of person to ask questions of. Oh, why do you tell me? I'm his not? house is a great wooden mansion set in an oak forest, which, incidentally, is a good walk from here. But why so I... let us save our breath for marching. Follow me. Oh, <laughs> It was late afternoon before they came to a belt of tall and very ancient oaks. Gandalf led the way along the thick thorn hedge to a wooden gate, high and broad. Through it they could see gardens and a cluster of barns, stables and sheds, and a long, low wooden house. You had better wait here and follow uh, only in pairs, mind, that interval of about five minutes. That will give him time to get used to the idea of visitors. Come on, Mr. Baggins. Hmm? We'll go first. Oh, will we? Good luck. Eh? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, Mr. Baggins. Oh, uh, thank you. Do take care. See hmm? the way those horses looked us over and trotted off? Yes. They have gone to tell Bjorn of the arrival of strangers. I hope they liked what they saw. Now, be on your best behavior, Bilbo. What? Well, I, I, I am try not to ask any questions. Soon they reached a courtyard, in the middle of which stood a huge man, fully half as tall again as Gandalf, leaning on a large axe. He had a black beard and thick black hair and great bare arms and legs with knotted muscles. The horses were standing by him with their noses at his shoulders. <laughs> well, here they are. <laughs> they don't look dangerous. Who are you and what do you want? I am Gandalf, the wizard. Never heard of him. And what's this little fellow? Hmm? Uh, this is Mr. Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit. <clears throat> uh, uh, of good family and unimpeachable reputation. At your service. Uh, at your service and your family's. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I have heard of you, even if you have not heard of me. But perhaps you have heard of my good cousin, Radagast. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Not a bad fellow as wizards go. I used to see him now and again. Well, now I know who you are, or who you say you are. What do you want? We have lost our luggage, Beyond, and are in need of help and advice. I may say we had rather a bad time of it with goblins in the mountains. I may say you goblins? Oh, so you've been having trouble with them, have you? Oh. Well, then you'd better tell me your tale, if it won't take all day. Now, oh. what did you go near goblins for? I was coming over the mountains with a friend or two. Or two? I... Well, I can only see one. And a little one at that. Well, I didn't like to bother you with a lot of us until I found out if you were busy. I'll give a whistle, if I may. Yes, go on. Whistle away. Torin uh, Oakenshield, at your service. Nori, at your service. One or three, you mean, I see. But these aren't hobbits. They're dwarves. Well, yes. I am not over fond of dwarves. Ooh. <laughs> But if you are really Torin, son of Thrain, son of Thor, and you are enemies of goblins and are not up to mischief in my lands, then what are you up to, by the way? Uh, they are on their way to visit the land of their fathers, east beyond Mirkwood, as I was about to tell you. Well, go on telling, then. We were crossing the High Pass when we took refuge in a cave from a terrible storm. The Hobbit and I and several of our Several? Companions... You call two several? Well, no, as a matter of 
fact there are more than two. Yes. Uh, well, go on, whistle again. <laughs> yes. Ah, there are Dory and Ori. At your service. Ori, at your service. <laughs> All right. Stand still and keep quiet, or it'll be supper time before this tale is ended. Oh, really? Well, while we were resting in a cave, some goblins took the hobbit and the dwarf... And so Gandalf, by keeping Bjorn enthralled with the story of their adventures, was able to introduce all the dwarves into his formidable presence. And by the time the wizard had finished his tale, the shadows were long in Bjorn's garden. Bumpy flight. The eagles put us down on Karak. Mm. Well, it's a good tale. It's a very good tale. Oh. It's the best I've heard for a long time. <laughs> you may be making it all up, oh. but you deserve a supper for the story all the same. Oh. Let's go in. Oh, Have something to eat. Oh, yes, please. I was going to your oh. Oh. In Bjorn's house, we had a supper such as we had not had since we left Elrond Half-Elven in the West. Bjorn told tales of the wild lands this side of the mountains, and of the dark and dangerous wood which barred our way to the east, and through which we had to pass. The terrible forest of Mirkwood. After many tales had been told, and many songs had been sung, Gandalf, Bilbo, and the dwarves, by now so tired that they could hardly see, sank wearily into a deep, dreamless sleep. Bjorn himself disappeared. Where to, no one knew. Get up, lazy bones. Get up, or there will be no breakfast left for you. Hmm? Breakfast? Where's, where's the breakfast? Mostly inside us. <laughs> <laughs> I say, let's quit. There's some there for you. Oh, oh, good. <clears throat> Thank you, Dwali. Right. Oh. Where's Gandalf, hmm? Oh, out and about somewhere. <laughs> I think he may be looking for Bjorn. Oh, well. There's no sign of him either. Is mm. Gandalf coming now? Good morning, oh. Torin. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Gandalf. Good morning, Bilbo. Good morning. Where is our host, Gandalf? Then where have you been? One question at a time, please. I will answer the second one first, which I think will also answer your first. I have been following bear tracks. Oh, I've followed them quite a distance, and do you know where they appeared to be leading to? Oh, where to? To that clearing just this side of the mountains where we had our pleasant little party with the wags and goblins last night. Oh, oh. Bjorn! Hey, Bjorn! It means to lead those evil creatures here. We shall all be caught and killed. Don't be silly. I said Bjorn was an enemy of goblins and all things evil, and so he is. But he also had to satisfy himself as to the truth of our story. Yes, but I... Quiet now. Here he comes. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All well? Morning. Yes, thank you, Mr. Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was a good story of yours last night. Story. And I like it better still, now that I know it's true. Oh, you must forgive my not taking your word, but if you lived near the edge of Mirkwood... You would not take the word of anyone. Uh, I should think more kindly of dwarves after this. Yes, and hobbits. <laughs> well, I'm told you killed the great goblin. Oh, that's nothing, nothing. <laughs> the great <laughs> goblin! <laughs> well, now, you will want to be getting on with your quest. I shall provide ponies for each of you, oh, and a horse yeah. for you, Gandalf, yeah. to carry you to the start of the forest path at the edge of Mirkwood. Yes. I shall give you food and water, uh -huh. oh. bows and arrows, not that you are likely to find anything in Mirkwood wholesome enough to eat. In there, wild things are dark and savage. And two pieces of advice I give you. The first is not to drink any of the water of the stream which will cross your path, for it carries enchantment and a great drowsiness and forgetfulness. The second is not under any circumstance to stray from the path. That you must not do for any reason. Now... Your months are loaded and ready. 
I suggest that you start now so as to reach Muckwood before nightfall. Right. Come on, everyone. My thanks, mighty sir. We yes. shall be ever at your service. Yes. 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 This is all I can do for you. <laughs> Let me lift you up, Mr. Baggins. I can see that hobbits are not made for pony back. Oh, well, I have to... Up! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Bjorn. <laughs> Everybody mount it. All ready, Bjorn. Good. Gandalf. Yes? At the gate of the forest, I must ask you to send back my horse and my ponies. Of course. I wish you all good speed. Thank you. My house is open to you if ever you come back this way again. Farewell. Farewell. Goodbye. 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 Swiftly and surely the travellers were borne to the eaves of Mirkwood, and by late afternoon were resting almost beneath the great overhanging boughs of its outer trees. Their trunks were huge and gnarled, their branches twisted, their leaves dark and long. You can see the entrance to the path through that gap in the trees. I hope you like the look of it. And now you must send back these excellent ponies you have borrowed. Send back the ponies? Uh, what about your horse, then? You don't mention sending that back. I don't, because I am not sending it back. Huh? I am riding it back. Oh, God. God. Oh, no, 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 no. I have some pressing business away south. In any case, I'm sending Mr. Baggins with you, and I've told you that he has more about him than you guess. You'll find that out before long. So cheer up, all of you, and think of the treasure at the end. Come now, dismount and unload the ponies. Uh, dismount, everyone, stop up. Oh, oh. Off you go, back to your master. Are you really leaving us? Yes, my little burglar, I really am. Oh, but courage, Bilbo. This is your legend and your adventure. Don't fail me. Well, I'll try not to. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Farewell, Torin. Dwarf! Farewell, Gandalf. Hurry Goodbye. back to us! Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Gandalf. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come, friends, shoulder your packs. Let us march into Mirkwood. Oh, dear. Ah, over the misty mountains go To dungeons deep and caverns old We must away was narrow and wound in and out of the massive tree trunks, black and gnarled with age and heavy with ivy and lichen. Twisted branches and blackened leaves met above their heads so that the adventurers felt as though they were walking down a long, gloomy tunnel. Oh, 
while all the trees leaned over them and listened. All was dark, green, and menacing. The nights were the worst. It then became pitch dark, so dark that they really could see nothing. Yes, I, I tried flapping my hand in front of my nose, but I couldn't see it at all. They slept huddled close together and took it in turns to keep watch. In the inky blackness, eyes would appear. Gleams of yellow and red and green fire and horrible, pale, bulbous eyes. Yes, insect eyes. They were huge insect eyes. Eventually, they reached the enchanted river. Crossing it presented no problem, for to their surprise, they found a boat moored to the bank. But even so, misfortune struck. <laughs> Bumbo, the heaviest and the fattest of the dwarves, managed to fall into the water. And as Bjorn had warned, he drifted at once into a deep sleep from which nothing would waken him. So for days and days, Bombo had to be carried. Yes, and what a weight he was, to be sure. Finally, the moment arrived when the last morsel of food had been eaten and the last drop of fresh water had been drunk. And the night was setting in. The outlook could scarcely have been bleaker. The only scrap of comfort came unexpectedly from Bombo. He woke up. Oh, what a lovely sleep. What a simply gorgeous sleep. Bumble! Uh, what to eat? You're awake. Are you all right? Certainly I'm all right, Barlin. But I'm jolly hungry, though. Oh, I can't ever remember being so hungry. Nor can any of us, Bumble. There is no food left. No food? No, not a crumb. We've been carrying you for days and all the food is gone. For days? No wonder I'm so hungry. Uh, you're hungry. Oh, I was having such beautiful dreams. I dreamt that I was in a forest, and there oh, were lamps Bob swinging Bob. from the trees and fires burning on the ground. A woodland king was there with all his people, and there was a great feast going on, yes. going on forever. Oh, shh. Everybody. What is it, Barney? Look through the trees. There. Uh, a light. And there. Another. Yes, yes. Another. Yes. Twinkling red lights, just like in my dream. Let's no, go, come, go come here, Bobo. Bobo, come back here. A fish would be no good if we never get back from it alive, would it? Without a feast, we shan't remain alive much longer anyway. That's true. I can't work any further with that food. Let us go and see, Toddy. Let's go. Let's go. In my dream, there were pies and ale and jellies and bread and jam and cakes and trifles and tarts and cream. Oh, very well, very well, Bumbo. Let us go. Oh, yes, let's go. Everyone. Very carefully and quietly and keep close together. Yes, yes. <laughs> that story. Oh. I was right. It is a feast. Elves feasting. Ah, yes. Wood elves. Not quite the same as high elves. More dangerous and less wise. Oh. Good people. Bilbo, hmm? you and I will go first. We will announce oh, ourselves oh, to the king ahead. and ask for food. Are you ready? Ready. Let us show ourselves. I am Thorin, son of Twain, son of Thor, first king. It's gone dark. They vanished. Oh, uh, wait. We are friendly. We mean no evil. Come back, Woodhead. No dwarves. Dwarves, come back. Wait, dwarves. Wait. I'm only a little hobbit. I, I can't walk as fast. I could get lost. I'm over here. Over here. Oh, come back here. All of you, here by me! The wood elves have gone. Now look, please be quiet, all of you. Now, does anyone know the way back to the park? Tony, Tony. Yes, what is it? The lights again, over there. Well, we'll catch them this time. Come on, Bumbo. Yes, wood elves. Come back, you foolish wolves, come back! There's their king, just like my dream. There's the feast. Oh, what a scrumptious spread. I will ask them for some. Excuse me, please. May we have some food? 
They've gone again. They've oh, gone. No. <laughs> Marlin, where are you? Here, Tony, over here. Where? Here, Bumbon is with me. Oh, Doreen, it was such a lovely feast. Yes, I know, I know. Poor Bumbo. Poor all of us. Oh. Dwarves! Dwarves! Come to your king! Oh, uh, Owen! Finny! Yes, Tony! Owen! Yes. Uh, the wood elves have gone. There is no feast. Why don't they help us? Are they frightened? Call again, Tony. Call again. It's no use, it's no use. Now we are really lost. The wood elves have tricked us into leaving the path. But you said they were not evil. Uh, perhaps they are not. But they are not to know what we are. Tony. Doreen, the burglar is missing. Huh? What? The rest of us are all here, but no, Mr. Baggins. Oh, no. The burglar lost. This is grim news. Grim news indeed. We must find him. Oh, yes. For Bilbo, this was one of his most miserable moments. He had blundered around in the darkness, calling for the dwarves by name, one after the other, time after time, until quite exhausted. He was alone in Merc Wood. He made up his mind that it was no good trying to do anything until daylight. Yeah, and, and with no hope of breakfast to revive me. He sat himself down with his back to a tree, and not for the first time fell to thinking of his hobbit hole with its beautiful pantries. Mm. He was deep in thoughts about eggs and bacon and toast and butter when he felt something like a strong, sticky string touch his hand. What's that? Ah! It's a huge spider's thread. Oh! There it is, right up on the tree above me. It wants to get me in its web and eat me. Ah, oh, horrible thing, it's huge. Well, my old blade was meant for goblins. <laughs> Let's hope it works against spiders. Ah, it's gonna jump on me! You hideous thing! You you see how you like that! <laughs> it's dead! It's dead! I've killed it! <laughs> All alone I've killed it! No Gandalf or dwarves to help me! I killed it! <laughs> I did it! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it. Oh. Well, my trusty sword. You saved my life. <laughs> I'll give you a name. I shall, I shall have to call you, yes. Uh, uh, Sting, Sting, that's what I'll call you Sting. That's a good name for a sword. Oh, dear, dear. Now, now I must explore. Uh, which way? Oh, which way? Yes, well, I'll just have to, I'll just have to guess and trust to luck. Oh, why didn't we remember Bjorn's advice and Gandalf's? What a mess we're in now. <laughs> we? <laughs> I only wish it was we. <laughs> Oh, it's horrible being all alone. Oh, more spiders. they've got there hanging from that branch. They look like cocoons or something. A lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thirteen? Thirteen! They, they've captured the dwarves. They must have surprised them and knocked them out with those poisonous stings. What can I do? I'll put the ring on my finger. If it made me invisible to goblins, it should make me invisible to spiders. Time to waste. Oh, well, I was always good at throwing stones. <laughs> Let's see what those horrors make of this. <laughs> good shot, Mr. Maggins. <laughs> Knocked it clean off its perch. Mm -hmm. Dead, too. I shouldn't wonder. It's not moving. What was it? A stone from over there? I didn't see anything there. <laughs> Yippee, attack! 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 Oh, that's 
spider spinning in a tree. Oh, that spider can't see me. Adequate, adequate, I'll keep up. Stop your spinning and look for me. <laughs> Now, I must try and get the dwarves and cut them free before the spiders give up the chase. Dwarves, dwarves, it's me, Bilbo. Oh. I mustn't forget to take the ring off. I'll get you all free, don't you worry. Now, which one's this? Yeah. I should know this nose. Oh, <laughs> Barlin, should have known. Are you all right? You look a bit blue. Yes, yes. I am all right. Thank good, you, good. Mr. Baggins. Look, have you, have you got your knife? Knife? Yes, your knife. Yes. Good. Well, look, cut some of the others loose. Yes, it won't take the spiders long yes. to realise they're chasing a will of the wisp and they'll be rushing back here. Who's next? Oh, this There you are, Bumper. You're the last. Of course. You had to leave me to last. Oh, these horrible threads are all sticking. They'll be back in a moment. Now, now look, all of you, you get stones, sticks, your swords and knives, anything you can lay your hands on. It's going to be a stiff fight. There are hundreds of them. But with a bit of luck, there should be a match for them. Now, I'm going to disappear. What? Disappear? With this, my magic ring. With a magic ring? Well, oh, uh, yes, I was going to keep it a, a secret, but I, I, I found it in the go goblin's cave. Uh, I, when I put it on, it makes me invisible. Uh, that's how I managed to rescue you. Uh, hmm. Well, what's your plan? Well, I'll, I'll disappear. <laughs> yes, I'll disappear. I'll disappear and I'll, I'll try to draw the spiders off in this direction, you see. And, and, and you run that way and then I'll try and meet up with you later. No, right? we can't let you... No, 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 no time for that. Here they come. Go on, go on, go on, quick. I'll do the stinging. Go on, off you go, quick. Run, my dwarves! Yeah. Fight to run now! Oh, the cop! Oh, the cop! Oh, the cop! Oh, the cop! Oh. 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 The spiders have turned back. They have oh. given up. You're sure, Barlin? Yes, you can see them going back. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, now we can rest. Oh, oh it's that horrid. Oh. Hold up while you're cutting through. Bebo! You've outrun them, then? Yes, we've escaped, thanks to you. Well done, Mr. Baggins. A cheer for our burglar. Yeah. Rahu! 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 Oh, most gratifying. Thank you. What a battle. We must have killed hundreds between us. This is a battle for the legends. Tony, ahead of us. No, don't look. What is it? I think it's wood elves, uh, armed. Um, armed? But we are too weak to fight anymore. I don't think they'll harm us, Barlin. They are elves, after all. Look, but I'll put my ring on, just in case. <laughs> and get out of the way of it. A good idea. What is it you want, Wood Elves? Our king wishes to talk with you. You will come with us. Lay down your arms. I say we fight them. No, perhaps they'll be kind and give us food. No, very well then, very well. We mean no harm, Elves. Come, Dwarves. Now let us go with the Elves. At least they may guide us out of this accursed forest. Follow us. These are the prisoners, O oh King. Indeed. Loose their bonds. They need no ropes here. Yeah? <coughs> 
<laughs> there is no escape from my magic door for those who were once brought inside. What have we done, O King? Is it a crime to be lost in the forest, to be hungry and thirsty, to be attacked by spiders? Huh? Are spiders your pets, that killing them makes you so angry? Yeah. It is a crime to wander in my realm without leave. Do you forget that you were in my kingdom, using the path that my people made? Did you not twice attack my people? We it, never did. Them. You attacked my people at their merrymaking in the forest, and roused the spiders with your riot and clamor. Huh? Now... I have a right to know what brings you here. Well, as you wish, I shall keep you all in prison until you have learned sense and manners. Take them to the cells. Take them away! And what of Mr. Baggins? True, he had managed to slip inside the Elf King's palace. But once inside, what was he to do? For days on end, he wandered about, trying to discover a way of rescuing the dwarves. Ah, but I did manage to discover where the dwarves' cells were. Yes, and in the deepest and gloomiest dungeon of all, Torin. he found Torin. Torin? Torin? Torin, are you in there? Bilbo! Bilbo! <sighs> Goodness, you found me. <laughs> Where are the others? But they're in cells just above yours. I managed to keep out of sight with the ring. Well done, Bilbo. Gandalf was right. You certainly have proved your worth. Oh, oh. Thank you, Torin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Has the Elven King discovered the reason for our quest? Oh, I don't think so. I, I haven't heard any mention of Smaug or our treasure. You mean my treasure? Hmm? The, the dwarves' treasure. Hmm. I don't trust these wood elves one little bit. If they think they can get a share of our gold, they... Uh, well, when do we escape? Hmm? What? What's your plan? When do we... What's my... <laughs> my dear Torin, I, I may have a magic ring, but I'm not a wizard like Gandalf. No, you know? of course, of course, Mr. Maggins. But I know I can rely on you to free us. Well, I'll do what I can. But I'm making no promises, you know. First of all, I, I have to do some more exploring. And then I'll, I'll come back and report. Good luck, Mr. Maggins. For all our sakes. Yes, thank you. this place? Oh, look at all those barrels. Goodness. I wonder, wonder what they're for, I suppose. Someone's coming. You to drag me all the way down here. Oh, it's good, all right. Ah. The finest barrel of wine we've had yet. Oh. <laughs> ah, I shall be hard at work tonight, clearing the cellars of the empty barrels. Mm -hmm. So I want you to join me in a drink. To help the labour. Oh, the finest barrel, eh? <laughs> well, it wouldn't do to send up poor stuff for the feast. <laughs> uh, but perhaps it's my duty to taste it. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Mind the trap door. It's rotten and I shouldn't like to see the chief of the guard falling through into the stream. You must get it mended then. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All in good time. Now here... Taste this. Ah, oh, well then, this is the wine cellar. And they tip the empty barrels through the trap door into the stream below. And but where does the stream lead to? Excellent, Galeon. Truly excellent. Yeah. The Elf King's feast will be all the merrier for this lake town brew. <laughs> Those lakemen are surely the masters of wine making. Indeed they are. <laughs> Oh, a precious little elf. <laughs> Lake Town. Well, if the barrels come from there, maybe the stream carries them back. That's a chance. <laughs> well, I can't see any other, anyway. I wonder what Torin will think of it. Well? Yeah, well, it's a desperate plan, Bilbo. But then so are circumstances. But how will you get the keys to the cells? Uh, tonight, the Elven King is giving a feast. All elves are very fond of wine, and I imagine they'll all sleep pretty soundly when the banquet's over. Yeah. I hope to get them then, you think? I know we can rely on our burglar. <laughs> Good luck, Bilbo. Oh, thank you. Gently. Oops. 
due to be dropped through a trapdoor into a stream which flows underneath the palace. You? You will be in the barrels. Oh, that's all very well, but... Uh, well, what then? Well, what then? Yes. Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I can only hope that the current will float the barrels to somewhere. Somewhere. I mean, where the, where the lake men who make the wine will pick them up. But we might be drowned. Or bruised and battered to pieces. I'm not going into any barrels. It is impossible. Oh, right. We cannot do Very well. You go back into your nice cells and I'll lock you in again and you can sit there comfortably and think of a better plan. Oh, come, come, come now, Bilbo. Come, 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 come. There is no other way. And our quest must be fulfilled. We will follow you, Tari. Oh. We will follow the king. All right, then. Come on. You must get busy. Follow me and... Shh, shh, shh. Be very, very quiet. Quiet. Yes. You watch for the guards. Yes. And the, the rest of you to the barrels. They're over there. Oh, I'm getting it. Help me get the lids off. Quietly. 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 Darling, darling. Yes, sir. Get some straw. Yes. Good idea. Over here. Here you are, Bilbo. Good. Now, in you get. All of you. Come on, him. If you're stuck it, I'll get tired of the barrel. That's right. Darling, come on. In you get. Yes. Yes, darling. Come on. Well, come on. There seems to be plenty of room, but I only hope I'm not in here too long. <laughs> so do I. Mind you, being. Now, duck down while I put the lid on. Mind my hood. Come on, get down. <sighs> Can you breathe? No, well, never mind. Goodbye, Bilbo. Bye bye. <laughs> now, uh, quickly, Bumbo. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Bumbo. But I can't get in there. Push on. Uh, uh, push him, Bilbo. No, oh, oh, it's no good. Bumbo, we'll breathe out. in, will you? Yes. Take oh, some strength. Out. Quickly, quickly. Now, try it. Breathe in. No, no, breathe, 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 breathe. Out. That's it. Out. Now, try it. That is it. Oh, yes. Now, it's just you and me, Bilbo. Someone's coming. Quick, go on. When you get it. It's just time. Yes, Simba, but what about you? I'll be all right. Now, get in. I'll put the ring on. He's so jolly, and he ought to be here to show us what's to be done. Oh, let's start without him. I've no wish to wait down here while the feast is still on. All right. Are these must be the barrels. Yes. And Galleon's own head be it. If the king's best wine is pushed into the river. <laughs> uh, let's open the trap door. <coughs> oh, looks cold, doesn't it? Glad I'm not a barrel tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a hand, Vic. What shall I do? I'll have, to, I'll have to creep to the edge of the trapdoor. Pull onto one of the barrels as it drops down. Oh, oh dear. I wish I was a better swimmer. But I can't be left behind. Oh. Won't work. I should be glad of another cup of wine. It won't be long. One more barrel to go. Huh? Now! Did you hear something? No. What? I thought I had put running across the floor. Footsteps? A rat, very likely. Oh, you've had too much wine. <laughs> Come on, last one. Over she goes.
Poor Bilbo stuttered and choked and coughed and wheezed, but in spite of the icy coldness of the stream and the swiftness of the current, he managed somehow to keep his grip on the rolling barrel. Oh, I do hope those lids are on tight enough. The barrels with their dwarvish contents passed swiftly under the Elm's Palace and out on towards Forest River. After the longest half hour in Bilbo's life, the barrels floated gently into the bank at a bend in the stream. There they are. And about time, too. I hope we'll have to wait here all night. Let's get them on board, then. Ah. <laughs> right. 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 Come on here. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Ah, this is a big load. Is it all as heavy as this? They'll sink the boat. There we are. Try and climb on board while they're loading up. Oh, I hope those lids have stuck on all right. Perhaps the dwarves are all drowned or, or battered to death. They grew lighter and warmer as they floated along. After a while, the shore sank to river level. The trees ended, and then Bilbo saw a sight. A lonely mountain. Far away, its dark head in a torn cloud, loomed the peak that Bilbo had been half hoping, half dreading to see since the adventure started all that time ago. The home of the dragon Smaug and the dwarves' long-lost treasure. The sun had set by the time they reached the lake town of Esgaroth, the town that had been built after the destruction of Dale by the dread Smaug. The boat gently eased into a little bay between the town and the shore, for Esgaroth was built entirely over the waters of the lake. There, the boatmen moored the boat and left wearily for their homes and their beds. And Bilbo set about releasing the dwarves. You stupid hobbit! I am sure I am black and blue all over. Where is our Now look! Now, now, now just, just, will you listen? Dwarves, listen. Are you still in prison or are you free? Hmm? Well, I mean, all this moaning and groaning and... and, and where's your gratitude? I mean, yes, do you think I enjoyed the trip down the river? Shame on you, shame on you. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm only a hobbit and, you, and you're dwarves. Yes, great big... You ought to know. You're supposed to be brave warriors. Well, warriors? I see. No, 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 now listen. We have... Now just now, you stop all these foolish complaints right. and let us consider what is next to be done. Eh? Oh, well, well, Mr. Baggins, what do you think is our next move? Oh, uh, well, I, I suggest that we go go into Eskaroth. Huh? What at this time of night? Certainly. Perhaps the, the lake men will give us food and shelter. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, I agree. Uh, uh, let us make ourselves known. I am grandson of the last king under the mountain. Esgaroth yes, and all know. these lands are part of my domain. I shall enter in upon my inheritance. <laughs> That'll be nice. Uh, come, to the gates of Lake Town. Yeah, all right. Come along, all of you. Come on, all of you. Who are you and what do you want? I am Thorin. Son of Thrain, son of Thor, king under the mountain. I wish to see the master of this town. King under the mountain? <laughs> Who are your companions? These are my faithful followers of the race of Durin. Uh, yes, and... Uh... Uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Baggins, the hobbit, who has travelled with us out of the west. But yes. the master oh. is feasting. Let us have no more words or your master may have something to say to you. Come! Let your king enter. Very well. Open the gate. Open the gate. Now. Now we shall see. Fall in. Quick. Stop. 
captain of the guard with six of his men led them over the bridge, through the gates, and into the marketplace of the town. From a great hall shone many lights, and there came the sound of many voices. The dwarves stood at its doors, blinking in the light, and looking at the long, crowded tables. What is this? I am Thorin, son of Thrain, son of Thor, king under the mountain. I return. Captain, what means this? Who are these creatures? Well, master, I think these are the prisoners who escaped from the elven king. Oh. Is this true? It is true that we were wrongfully waylaid by the elven king and imprisoned without cause. But neither lock nor bar may hinder the homecoming spoken of old. Nor is this town part of the Wood Elves' realm, but part of the ancient dwarves' kingdom, which now I claim. What's this? He speaks truly, master. Thraw was our king before Smaug destroyed the old uh, town. Our king is come. They shall be avenged. <laughs> Dwarves were welcomed in the town amid scenes of astonishing enthusiasm. A large house was given up to Taurine and his company, and crowds sat outside and sang songs all day and cheered if any dwarf so much as showed his nose. Yeah, but I was not feeling particularly cheerful. I had not forgotten the sight of the mountain. Nor could I put thoughts of the dragon out of my head. At the end of a fortnight, Tarim began to think of departure. Autumn was now getting far on. The leaves were falling and the winds were cold. It would not do to allow the townspeople's enthusiasm to cool with delay. But at least one person was not sorry to see them go. The master of the town. The sooner this dwarf and his followers have gone, the better. <laughs> Let them go and bother Smaug and see how he welcomes them. Oh, but what if Smaug gets angry and takes it into his head to attack the lake town and destroy us as he did Dale? Yes, the sooner they're gone, the better. And so, one morning, three large boats left Hesgadath, laden with rowers, dwarves, Mr. Baggins, ponies, and plenty of provisions. The townspeople sang and cheered from the quay as the adventurers started north on the last stage of their journey. The Lord of Silver Mountains shall come into his own. His crown shall be upholed, and his crown shall be restrung. His throne shall echo golden through songs of your The only person thoroughly unhappy was me. In two days, they rode to the northern tip of the Long Lake, where the river running led straight to the lonely mountain. They could all now see it, towering grim and tall before them. At the end of the third day, they drew into the bank and disembarked, for the rowers would row no further. The ponies were loaded, the lakemen said farewell, and Bilbo, Tarin, and the dwarves set out for the regions known as the Desolation of the Dragon. We all knew that we were drawing near to the end of the journey, and that it might be a very unpleasant end. All the same, they reached the foot of the mountain on the fourth day without mishap, and without seeing any signs of the fiery dragon. Hurry! 
Queen. Yes, Marlin, what is it? Over there, where the river comes out of that great cavern in the mountainside. That must be the south gate that the lake men told us about. They also told us that it was Smaug's front door. So let us make our way to the western face of the mountain and look for the hidden side door. Yes, 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 quickly. If my grandfather's map is true, the entrance will be high up. So we have some climbing to do, my friends. Come, let us move away from these dark birds. They look like the spies of evil. Come, courage, dwarf, forward. After yet another hard and difficult journey, their spirits lowering by the hour, the company made camp in a long valley on the western side of the mountain. Day by day, in parties, they toiled up and down the craggy mountainside, searching for the secret door. And day by day, they came back to their camp without success. But at last, unexpectedly, they found steps cut into the rock, leading upwards and out of sight. Oh, this, this staircase seems to be going on forever. Oh, it's getting very narrow, too. You can see the ponies down there. Oh, yeah. oh I'd really not, rather not look if you don't mind. It's rather a long way down. The steps are opening out into a sort of ledge. Can we rest here, Tarin? Oh, well, we can't go any further, so we might as well. Can't go any further? Why not? Well, look ahead. This is as far as the steps lead to this little shelf here. Well, oh. then, then, then this must be the secret side door. What must be? Well, yeah, this cliff face. But there is no keyhole, no doorpost or lintel to be seen. It is as smooth as glass. Well, exactly, exactly. It's too smooth. The rest of the mountain is rough and pitted. This surface is as smooth and upright as mason's work. I mean, look, even, even the colour's different. It's grey and the rest of the mountain's black. You're right, Uncle. This was fashioned by craft, not by nature. Uh, come, my dwarves. Let us see if we can open it. Yes. All yes. push, now get your shoulders to it. Yes. Ready? All together. Yes. No! Yes. Uh, and again. Yes. No! Don't, don't push me. Push the door. Yes. And again. Yes. No! Oh, I'm not a door. Yes. Oh, it's no good, Tori. Now, don't give up so easily. Oh. Again, all together. Come along. No! Yes. Oh. I'll never move. Not if we go at it for hours. It is solid rock. Baggins and his door. <laughs> what now, Bilbo? Hmm? I said, what now? What now? Yes. Ah, yes, well, that's just what I was wondering. What now? <laughs> yes. What now? That is just what oh, I was... leave him be, Balin. Oh, it's getting cold. Yes. Today is the last day of autumn. And yeah. winter comes after autumn. <laughs> Of course! Durin's Day. Eh? Hey, what's this about Durin's Day? When the last moon of autumn and the sun are in the sky together. Today is the last day of autumn, and the sun is still up. And look! Yes. New moon! But what difference does it make what day it is? Shh, 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 shh. There's the thrush. The map was right. It's only an old thrush knocking a snail against the rock. Shh, shh, shh. Be quiet, all of you. Magic is afoot. You remember? Elrond told us the moon letters on the map said, stand by the grey stone when the thrush when the thrush knocks, yes, yes. and the setting sun with the last light of Durin's day will will shine upon the keyhole. And today is Durin's day. And there is the thrush knocking on the grey stone. Now we must wait for the sunset. The thrush is waiting too. The moon is risen. The darkness is closing in. The sun is sinking fast. But it's setting behind clouds. How can it shine upon the keyhole? Shh, 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 shh. No, no, look. There's a gap in the clouds. See? The sun is shining on the stone. Sure it is. Oh! There's a little hole in the rock. The thrush has gone. The key, Torin. Uh -oh. Your grandfather's key. Yes, Before yes. the sun sets. Oh, Come on, Torin. the key. Oh, the key. Right. Okay. Here, here. It fits. Yes. Now, everyone, push. Ah, oh. 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 
door. <laughs> we found it. Don't forget where we are. This is the lonely mountain, and somewhere through that door lies smell. Yes, you're quite right, as usual, Mr. Baggins. Quite right. Well, my dwarves, now is the time for our esteemed burglar to perform the service for which he was included in our company. Yes. yes. Uh, now is the time for him to earn his reward. Yes, 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 yes. Earn my reward? What do you... Well, if you mean you think it's my job to go into the secret passage first, oh, Todding Oakenshield, may your beard grow even longer? Well, you can just say so at once and have done with it. I could refuse, you know. Uh, uh, however, I don't think I shall. Perhaps I have begun to trust my luck more than I used to. Gandalf often said I had more than my share. So, I think I will go and have a peep and get it over. Wait here. Uh, well, good luck, Bilbo. Yes, uh, good, good luck, luck Bilbo. Good luck. Yes. Be careful. Be careful. Yes. Come back safely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have the magic ring. I shall wear it and I shall go to Smaug's cabin and, and see what he is up to. Oh, dear me. What a fool you are, Bilbo Baggins. What use have you got for dragon guarded treasures? <laughs> oh, if only I could wake up and find this beastly tunnel was my own front hall at home. What's that light? That must be a fire. Oh, certainly getting warm. What's that? <gasps> oh! Spaug! And there, fast asleep, he lay. A vast red gold dragon, wisps of smoke and flame thrusting from his jaws and nostrils, his huge tail coiled, and his great bat like wings folded. Beneath him and about him on all sides of the immense cavern which was his home lay countless piles of precious things gold wrought and unwrought, gems and jewels, and silver red stained in the ruddy light. There were coats of mail, helms and axes, swords and spears, and rows of great jars and vessels filled with a wealth that could not be guessed. Bilbo's heart was pierced with enchantment and with the desire of dwarves, and he gazed motionless at the gold beyond price and count, almost forgetting its frightful guardian. Well, dude. I smell you and feel your air. I hear your breath, thief. Help yourself. There is plenty and to spare. Oh, yeah. No, 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 thank you. Oh, oh, smile. The, the tremendous. I, I didn't come for presents. I, I only wished to ha have a look at you and, and see if you were as great as the tales say. And am I? Uh, truly, uh, songs and tales fall utterly short of reality. Oh, oh, Smaug, the chiefest and greatest of all uh, calamities. Mm. Who are you? Come from, may I ask? Um, I know the smell of dwarves, no one better. I am the, I am the friend of bears and the, uh, the guest of eagles. Uh, I am the clue finder and, and the ring winner. I am the luck wearer and, and, and the barrel rider. <laughs> Lovely titles, to be sure. <laughs> but what are you? Battle rider, eh? I don't know your smell. Well, you don't know everything. You, oh, smile the mighty. Is that so? 
Well, I certainly know that you're here to steal my treasure. Wrong. Oh, oh Smaug the Dreadful. Surely, oh, oh Smaug the un unaccessibly wealthy, you must realize that your success has made you some bitter enemies. We, we, we have come over hill and under hill by wave and wind for revenge. Revenge? The king under the mountain is dead. And where are his kin that seek revenge? The Lord of Dale is dead. And where are his sons' sons that dare approach me? I kill where I wish. And none can resist. I laid low the great warriors of old when I was young and tender. Now I am old and strong. 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 Deep in the shadows. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, I have always understood that dragons were softer underneath, especially in the chest. Your information is antiquated. I am armored above and below with iron scales and hard gems. No blade can pierce me. Mm. Yeah, truly, uh, th there can be nowhere found the equal of Lord Smaug, the impenetrable. What magnificence to possess a waistcoat of fine diamonds. Yeah. It is rare and wonderful indeed. Look, what do you say to that? Uh, dazzlingly marvelous. Perfect. See the old fool rolling over like a dog at his age. Oh, look, there's a large bare patch over his left breast. Uh, uh, flawless. Staggering. Well, I... I... I must not detain your magnificence. Ponies need some catching, I believe, after a long start. And so do burglars. <laughs> Never laugh at a live dragon. Steve, I heard you run up the tunnel. It's as well for you that it is too small for me to follow. <gasps> Barrel Rider, I don't know your smell, but if you are not one of those men of the lake, you had the help. They shall see me and remember who is the real king under the mountain. Come and sit down here by me. Thank you. you oh, I think I'll just stand there. Be quiet, you stupid old fright. Yeah. Hmm? Oh. Uh, now, Bilbo, have you discovered anything? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Smaug has a bare patch in his armor, just over the left breast. Uh. A champion archer might be able to kill him with an arrow in there. Ah, uh, well done, Bilbo. Anything else? Yes. He's guessed that we came from Lake Town. He'll be going there for revenge. Oh, that's yeah. He also knows where we're hiding, so our only hope is to keep well in the tunnel and close the door. Yes, yes. Tell me, Bilbo, when you saw the treasure, did you see... Did you see the Arkenstone? The Arkenstone? The Arkenstone? What's that? It was the dwarves' greatest treasure, a great white gem. The Arkenstone of Thrain. It was like a globe with a thousand facets. It shone like silver in the firelight, like water in the sun, like snow under the stars, like rain upon the moon. Uh, mm, Bilbo, come in! It's 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 small. Uh, it's, oh, it's flying this oh, way. Oh, quick, oh, inside everybody, into the tunnel. Oh, Marlin, stand by the door. Oh, 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 Fly away, old thrush, before you're caught. 
Everybody in! father used to say. Yes. Yes, well, now, look, listen. I Listen, all of it. Now, look, I'm going down the tunnel once again. Yes, I mean, after all, the only way out is down, isn't it? Yes. So, so I, I, I think this time you'd better all come with me. Oh, come, my wolves, come. Mr. Baggins is right. It yes, is I, the only way. Quite right. Yes, but you seem very cheerful about it, Bilbo. Yes, I know. I can't explain it. <laughs> yes, it must be simply, simply burglar's luck. Now, come along. Down the tunnel, all of you. And, and, and be, be quiet as you can. And do, do be careful. The uh, treasure cavern is just round this corner. There's no red glow, so I don't think Smaug is at home. And, and, all right, all right. Now, now, all of you, wait. Wait here while I go and see. Come on, Tony. All right. Ah, yes. Uh, come along, then. It's all right. <laughs> all clear. You can light the torches. Light the torches. But what if smoke comes back? Then we'll have to run back into the tunnel. The torch is ready, Tony. Then let us go into the treasure. Hold the torches aloft! Look at last the fabled treasure of the race of Durin. Many long years have we dreamed, my dwarves, but never, never have any of us dreamed of such beauty the vastness of the horde! Gold, my dwarf! It, it's gold! Gold! And silver! And diamond rubies! And, and silver! And emeralds! And stones! Precious ring! Royal stones! And shiny armor! Fill your pockets! Take all you can carry! Well, thank goodness you're satisfied about something! <laughs> What's this? The Arkenstone. It must be. It must be. Yes. Tony described it exactly. Fairest gem of all the dwarfish treasure. Oh, it's very beautiful. I must give it to Torin. Yes. No. No, I'll, um, I'll put it in my pocket. Yeah. Oh, I am a burglar indeed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I will tell the dwarves about it, of course, sometime. But I just, 
just for a bit, I'd like to keep it to myself. <laughs> it's really very, very beautiful. Mr. Baggins! Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, here is the first payment of your reward. Oh? Uh, cast off your old coat and put this on. Oh, but I'd rather... Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, what is it? It's a coat of mail made by elves of silver steel, which they call mithril. Oh. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's very light, isn't it? Yes. Yes, and very strong. It is protected by magic. Ooh. There are few such coats left in these days. Mm. So it is worth far more than its weight in gold. Oh, well, uh, uh, well thank you, Tony. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll take my coat. Thank you. It feels magnificent. <laughs> I expect I look rather silly in it. Still, I wish there was a looking glass handy. The treasure is not yet won. Yes, we have found it true enough, but we have not found a way of escape. Oh, that's true. Yes, it is 100 years since I was last in my grandfather's halls. But not for a thousand years could I forget the ways of this place. From here, we can make our way to the great chamber of Thrall, and from there to the front gate. Now, follow me. This is where the river comes out of the south side of the mountain. Well, I never expected to be looking out of Smaug's front door. Uh, now, we have four or five hours hard march ahead of us. Oh. Yes, yes, there is an old lookout post at the southwest corner of the mountain. From there, we can see in all directions. But what if Smaug spots us there? Uh, we should be safe enough, Marlin. There is a chamber cut into the mountain face behind the ledge. It was made to house a watchman. There is room for us all, and we'll be quite snug there. But it is a hard path, so let us waste no more time. We do not want Smaug to catch us out in the I wonder where Smaug is. After blocking the entrance to the side door, Smaug was very, very angry. No one had dared oppose him for many an age, and someone would have to pay. The intruders had come from the lake town. And so it was that the fiery dragon turned in all his might and fury and menace towards Eskaroth. Look! Look at the lonely mountain! The lights again! Perhaps the king under the mountain is forging gold. It is time the songs began to prove themselves again. Which king are you talking about? As like as not, it is the fire of the dragon. The only king under the mountain any of us can remember. Ah, uh, you are always foreboding gloomy things, Bob. You may be the finest archer in Lake Town, but it seems to make you very sour company, my friend. Talk of something cheerful. Oh, look at those lights now. Aren't they lovely? You fools. I must go and see the master. But it's the king. The king under the mountain. His wealth is like the sun. Master. Master. Bob. Give the bread back. Yeah, have some wine. Sit down here at the window and watch the lights in the mountain. Aren't they lovely? Master, the dragon is coming. Hmm? What? Those lights, it's Smaug, and she's coming here, or I'm a fool. Smaug? Oh, no. Sound the alarm. Cut the broom. Well, don't just stand there, man. Get your arches together. They are torn up outside, oh, Master. Oh, good. Look! Tron! Tron! Stand fast, Chief Bowen! No man can withstand smoke! We are doomed! Run and hide! Swim for the shore! Stand to your posts! Fight for your town! Hail shall be avenged, whatever the cost!
a must have a champion. Farewell. Farewell, bud. Farewell. One arrow left. Yes, you to the last black arrow. You have never failed me, and I have always recovered you. What is it, old thrush? What tidings do you bring? Of the dragon's left breast. Thank you, good thrush. Thank you. See the hollow? Black arrow! To your mark! Slout's wounded! It can't be true! It is! Look! He's falling! He's falling on Escaron! <laughs> Strange is happening, I'm sure of it. Where is Smaug? Yes. yes. Uh, look at those flocks of birds. What? It is time for their autumn wanderings. Why do they stay? And all about the mountain, there are many carrion birds. As if a battle were afoot. Ah, hey, there's that old thrush again. Oh. Uh, look, look. He's trying to tell us something. If only he were a raven. We dwarves can speak with ravens. Yes, what? Ah, he's gone. I knew many ravens of the rocks hereabouts when I was a dwarf lad. Just above this very guard chamber, there lived a wise and famous pair, old Kark and his wife. Uh, but I don't suppose that any of that ancient breed linger hereabouts now. Hey, the thrush is coming back. Oh, yes. Look at him, and he's, he's bringing a raven with him. And a very old raven, to be sure. Look at his bald head and see how slowly his wings flap. <laughs> Son of Thrain and Balin, son of Thundin. I am Rack, son of Kark. Son of Kark! You are indeed welcome. It is a hundred years and fifty and three since I came out of the egg, but I do not forget the king of old. I bring you tidings, some of joy to you. Others you will not think so good. Say on, O Rack, son of Kark. Birds are gathering back again to the mountain. The word has gone out that Smaug is dead. Ah, <laughs> dead. Smaug dead. This thrush, may his feathers never fall, saw him killed in battle. The oh, men of Escaros, he was shot by Bart, the chief archer, a grim man, but true. Oh, Smaug dead. The dragon killed him, you hear, dwarves. My dwarves, Smaug is dead. <laughs> So much for joy. Torian, no can shield. But many are gathering here beside the birds. The news of the death of the dragon has already gone far and wide. And the legend of the wealth of Thraw has not lessened in the telling during many years. Many are eager for a share of the spoil. A share? Already a host of wood elves is on its way from Barkwood with their king. Wood elves? Those wood elves? Yes, they have gone to give aid to the men of Escarot, whose town is no more. Many of the townsfolk have died. By the lake, men murmur that their sorrows are due to the dwarves. They do think to find amends from your treasure. They must think again. Wisdom must decide your cause. 
But if you will listen to my counsel, you will not trust the master of the lake men, but rather him that killed the dragon, but the bowman. Somehow he escaped to life in the wreck of Lake Town, and he is hailed as hero and savior of his people. They called for him to be their king, but he is loyal to the memory of the race of Durin. We would see peace once more among dwarves and men and elves after the long desolation, but it may cost you dear in gold. I have spoken. None of our gold shall they have. Ah, thanks, Roark, son of Kark. If you would earn our thanks still more, I beg of you to send your fastest and strongest messengers to my cousin Dain in the Iron Hills of the North, for he has many fierce warriors well armed and dwells nearest to this place. Bid him hasten to us. Uh, I will not say if this counsel be good or bad, but I will do what can be done. Farewell. <laughs> Farewell, Rock! Farewell, Thrush! Now, my dwarves, back to the front gates. We must build our defenses, and there is little time to lose. Eh? Bend your backs to it! The king beneath the mountains, the king of carven stone, the lord of silver fountains. The dwarves labored hard in fortifying the front gate, but since this was now the only way out of the mountain, it was also the only means of access to the treasure. As they worked, the ravens brought news that the joint armies of the lake men and wood elves were hurrying towards the mountain. In four days they would arrive. And in four days the hastily thrown up but solid barrier across the front gate was ready. The only way into the mountain was by climbing over the wall as the dwarves did themselves with ropes and ladders. I didn't like the way things were going at all. What a company of spearmen are riding up the valley. Who are you that come armed for war to the gates of Thorin, son of Train, king under the mountain? Hail, Thorin. We rejoice that you and your companions are alive beyond our hope. There is matter for a parley and a council. Who are you? And of what would you parley? I am Bard, the bowman of Esgaroth, and by my hand was the dragon slain and your treasure delivered. So we learn. I am the heir of Gideon, lord of Dale, and in your horde is mingled much of the wealth of that town which Smaug destroyed. I would speak for the men of Esgaroth and ask whether you have no thought for their misery and distress. They aided you in your need, and in recompense you have brought only ruin. We are just in all things, but nothing will we give under threat of force. I will not parley with armed men at my gate. Not at all with the people of the Elven King, whom I remember with small kindness. The Elven King is my friend, and has succored the people of the lake in their need. Enough! In this debate he has no place. Be gone now, ere our arrows fly. One moment more. These are our terms. Errol. In the name of Esgaroth and Mirkwood, we speak unto Torino Oakenshield, king under the mountain. We bid him consider well these claims, or be declared our foe. At the least, he shall deliver one twelfth portion of the treasure unto Bard, as the dragon slayer and the heir of Gideon from which Bard will himself contribute to the relief of the men of the lake and to the rebuilding of a new town. Here is my answer. <laughs> my next arrow will be aimed not at your shield, but at your head. We will give you time to repent your words. I declare the mountain besieged. You shall not depart from it until you call on your side for a truce and a parley. We leave you to your goal. Eat that if you will. Time behind the barricade passed slowly and wearily, 
Until at last news came of Torin's cousin, Dain, from the Iron Hills. It was only two days' march away and was bringing with him more than 500 armed dwarves. This was the moment for Bilbo's plan. Oh, y yes. I decided to take the Arkenstone over to the enemy. Um, well, not that I thought of them as the enemy, but those dwarves were so stubborn. Torin had often said that the Arkenstone was beyond price to him. In fact, he'd made it very clear that anyone finding it and not handing it over to him straight away would be dealt with very sharply. Very sharply indeed. But so determined was Bilbo to stop any fighting before it started. That evening, he took the Arkenstone from its hiding place, wrapped it in a rag, and climbed over the barricade down towards the lower course of the stream. He was nearly across when he missed his footing on a round stone and fell into the cold water. Who goes there? What? I'm, I'm Mr. Bilbo Baggins, B-A-double-G-I... <coughs> Companion of Torrin Oakenshield, if you want to know. Companion of Torrin? And what might be your business? Yes, well, whatever it is, it's my own, my good elves. And if you ever wish to get back to your woods, you'll take me to the bard, or whatever his name is, and, and to your king, as quick as may be. Brave words, Hobbit. Yeah. Very well. Follow us. Yes, buck up, I'm frozen. Hobbit. Yes. Dripping wet. Yes. In a coat of mithril. <laughs> What's he doing here? Yeah. What indeed? This is their tent. Enter. Oh, thank you very much. It's Bilbo Baggins. The Hobbit. He said he wished to speak with you, my lord. Did he? And what have you to say to us, Mr. Baggins? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Mr. Bard, um, your your, ma your Majesty, um, sire, uh, yes. Um, <coughs> you see, <coughs> it's about this impossible situation. Smaug is dead. Uh, I mean, yes. Uh, and there's more than enough treasure for everyone. And yet, it looks as though all these people, the men, elves, and the dwarves, are going to fight over it. And I mean, if, they, if they're going to fight over it, well, someone is bound to be killed. We and are I pers quite ready to accept any reasonable terms that Torin may offer. He has heard our demands and has not seen fit to reply. Yes, well... There I... need be no battle. Well, with the humblest respect, the King of the Wood Elves doesn't know the King of the Dwarves as well as I do. Indeed? No. Oh. You see, uh, Torin is quite prepared to sit on that heap of treasure and starve as long as you remain here. Well, let him. Such a fool deserves to starve. Yes, but do you know about Dane and his followers from the Iron Hills? They're only two days' march away, you know. Well, we knew of Dane, but not that he was so close. Why do you tell us this? Well... Are you betraying your friends, oh, or are you threatening us? No, 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 no neither, Mr. Bard, neither. I'm, I'm merely... Well, I'm merely trying to avoid trouble for all concerned. Uh, yes. Now, I will make you an offer. An offer? What is it? Well, it's... <laughs> This. This is the Arkenstone of Train, the heart of the mountain. It is also the heart of Torin. He values it above a river of gold. I give it to you. It will aid you in your bargaining. But how is it yours to give? Well, it, yes, well... Uh, well, I mean, it isn't exactly. But, well, I am willing to let it stand against all my claim, don't you know? I mean, I, I, may, I may be a burglar, or, or so they say. Personally, I, I never felt in the least bit like one, but, but I am an honest one, more or less, I hope. A anyway, I, I'm going back now, and the dwarves can do what they like to me. I, I hope you'll find it useful. Bilbo Baggins. Yes? You are more worthy to wear that coat of mithril than many who have looked more comely in it. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you, my Lord King. But I advise you to remain with us. Oh, no, no, I'm... Here you I... shall be honoured and thrice welcome. Well, it, it's most kind of you, I'm sure, but I, I don't think I ought to leave my friends like this after all we've been through together, you know. I, I really must be going, and, and quickly. As you wish. My elves will guide you to a safe ford across the stream. Oh, thank you. <coughs> and uh, set you dry on the other side. Oh, thank you. Most kind of you. 
Good night. Good night, Mr. Baggins. Yes, good night, Mr. Mr. Bard. Good night, little hobbit. May fortune bring us together again. Yes. Soon. <laughs> that dwarves. They're sending another embassy to parley with us. They'll have got wind of Dines coming with his troops. I thought that might alter their mood. They are not sending a herald this time. Bard is coming closer. And there's the elven king. Yeah. Old man with them, holding a box. Who is he? And what do you suppose is in the box? Hail, Torin. Are you still of the same mind regarding our terms? Did you come to ask me idle questions? Still, the elf host has not departed as I bade. Till then, you come in vain to parley with me. Is there then nothing for which you would yield any of your gold? Nothing that you or your friends have to offer. What are the contents of this box? Open it, old man. What of this? Oh, the Arkenstone. The Arkenstone. That stone was my father's and is rightly mine. Why should I purchase my own? How came you by the heirloom of my house? If there is need to ask such a question of thieves. We are not thieves. How did you come by it? Your own we will give back in return for our own. Where did you find it? There need be no bloodshed. How did you come by it? Uh, uh, sorry. Um, it, it, uh... It was me, Torin. Uh, what? Yes, me. I, I, I gave it to him. You? You gave it, you miserable yes. hobbit! You, oh, don't, don't, don't strike me, Torin! You undersized Ooh. burglar! Ooh. By the beard of Durin, I wish I had Gandalf here. I only tried... Curse him for his choice of you. May his beard wither! Oh, 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 oh Torin, you're hurting me! Hurting I only... you? Yes, I will want... kill you, you wretched oh, creature! No, no, no! No, no uh, put me down! Down oh, onto the down. rocks with you! Undersized burglar! Oh, oh. By the beard of Durin, I wish I had Gandalf here. I only tried... Curse him for his choice of you. May his beard wither! Oh, 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 Torin, you're hurting me! Hurting I only... you? Yes, I, I will want... kill you, you wretched oh, creature! No, no, no! No, no uh, put me down! Down oh, onto the down. rocks with you! Oh, no. Your wish is granted, Torin. Stay your hands, unafraid. All right. Torin! The old man holding the Arkenstone. It is Gandalf. If you don't like my burglar, please don't damage him. Just put him down. Very well. Oh, 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 thank you. Go down to your friends, you descendant of rats, before I change my mind and hurl you down. Oh, yes, of course. Good goodbye. Oh, oh. Doreen, we will give you until tomorrow. At noon, we will return and see if you have brought from the horde the portion that is to be set against the stone. If that is done without deceit, then we will depart and the elf host will go back to the forest. Meanwhile, farewell. <laughs> Karin, are you going to give in to them? Give in? <laughs> Don't be a fool. Send for Roak. Bid him take word to my cousin Dane to come with his dwarves at the greatest speed possible. Mr. Bard, your majesty. What is it, Bilbo? An army of dwarves is approaching. Thank you, Bilbo. My lord king, it is surely Dane and his dwarves. 
They must have marched double paced through the night. Warned by Darin, somehow, I do not doubt. Yes, as I thought. The inn approaches. Let the mighty dwarf pass. Hail! I am Bard of the Lake Men. This is the King of the Wood Elves. Hail, Bard. Hail, Elven King. I and my dwarves are hasting to our kinsmen in the mountain, since we learn that the kingdom of old is renewed. But why do you sit as foes before defended walls? We are waiting till noon for your cousin Torin to fulfill his bargain. Bargain? One twelfth of the dragon's treasure in exchange for the Arkenstone. The Ark? You have the Arkenstone? We do. Show him, Gandalf. There. Oh. The heart of the mountain. You dare to bargain with the sacred stone? To avoid battle, I do so bargain. I ask for passage for my dwarves through your army. The way to the mountain is blocked. You and your dwarves must stay where you are until midday. We shall see. Come, dwarves! Yeah, he's very angry. The treasure will be claiming more lives today. Do you think he means to fight us? He is even now giving the signal for the dwarves to attack. Men and elves, to your posts. Dwarves, to the attack! Halt! Halt! Dread has come upon you all. It has come more swiftly than I guessed. To the north, that great black cloud, bats, bats like a sea of locusts. They fly above an army, the army of Bolg. Bolg! Goblins. Aye, goblins and their thousands. They ride upon wolves and wags are following. Let's deign come into the council at once with Bard and the Elven King. We must join forces against the evil denizens of the North. Upon victory depends not just the treasure, nor only our lives, but the whole future and well-being of Middle-earth. Go your post! began the battle of the five armies. Upon one side the goblins with the bats and wolves and the wild wards, upon the other elves and men and dwarves. At first, victory seemed at hand, but sheer weight of numbers was too much even for the combined strength of Bard, Dane and the elven king. Slowly, they were driven back. Gandalf! Gandalf, look! It's Torin! He and his dwarves have climbed down the barricades! For me! To me, elves and men! To me, all my king's hope! I have tarried here long enough. Now my sword glamdering must cleave goblins once again. Oh no, don't, don't go, Gandalf. Don't leave me. Wear the magic ring, Bilbo. What? But keep well out of the way. The ring may make you invisible, but it won't save you from a chance arrow or a flying spear. No? Farewell until we meet again. Don't, don't, don't go. Keep back. Keep back, I say. Gandalf will be slain. 
be slain. They must be. <gasps> the eagles. The eagles are coming. The eagles are tearing the goblins to bits. There's still not enough of them. What's that? It, it's Bjorn. Bjorn has come. Now there's a chance. The goblins... Oh, oh, oh. Baggins, B-A-W... It is well that I found you. Are you much hurt? But I have a nasty knock on the head, I think. I will carry you down to the camp in the valley. Oh, that's very kind of you. You are needed. The day is won, but Keeley and Feely are dead, and Torin oh. is grievously wounded. Torin? He asked for you. Come on. Thank you. sit beside my father's until the world is renewed. Oh, no, no, no. Since I now leave all my gold and silver and go where it is of little worth, I wish to part in friendship from you and I would take back my words and deeds at the gate. Oh, no. Um, farewell, King Under the Mountain. This is a bitter adventure if it must end so. And not a, not a mountain in gold can amend it. Yet I'm glad that I shared in your perils. That's been more than any Baggins deserves. No. No. There is more in you of good. Than you know, child of the kindly West. Some courage and wisdom blended in measure. If more of us valued food and cheer and song eh, above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. But sad or merry, I must leave it now. Farewell. Thank you, Torrid. Farewell. Here, Torin, lay I the Arkenstone upon your breast. Let it lie there until the mountain falls, and may it bring good fortune to all your folk that dwell hereafter. In your tomb, Karin, lay I your sword, O Christ. Never was it wielded by a mightier hand. As I assume my cousin's throne, I now assume his obligations. Torin has his Arkenstone, and I will honor the agreement of the dead. One fourteenth of the treasure shall be given to Bard of the Lake Men. To you, King of the Elves, I give the Emeralds of Gurion. And as for you, Bilbo Baggins, hmm? although you have laid aside your claim, we would give you something. Oh, oh no, no, really, I, I couldn't. I insist. You I would reward most richly of all. Oh, yes, but I... Uh, well, uh, 
well, I, I, I suppose perhaps just just two chests, uh, one of silver, one of gold. <laughs> That's as much as I can manage. Come, Bilbo, all is ready. Farewell, Barlin. Farewell, Bilbo. And, and farewell, Dwalin. And, and farewell to, to you all. Farewell. 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 May your beards farewell. never grow thin. <laughs> farewell, Corrin Oakenshield. And Keely and Feely. Goodbye, Bilbo. And good luck wherever you journey. Thank you. If you visit us again when our halls are made fair once more, then the feast shall indeed be splendid. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Balin. And and if ever you're passing my way, don't wait to knock. Tea is at four, you know. At but four. but any of you are welcome at any time. <laughs> farewell. 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 The elf host was on the march back to Mirkwood. Bilbo and Gandalf rode behind the elven king, and beside them strode Beor once again in man's shape, and he laughed and sang in a loud voice throughout the journey. At length, they drew near to the borders of the forest, where the river flowed out. No further, Mr. Baggins, I think. No. Whoa. Farewell, O oh Elden King. Merry be the Greenwood while the world is yet young, and merry be all your folk. Farewell, O oh Gandalf. Farewell, beyond my old friend. We see each other too late. Maybe we do. The cares of our domains keep us apart. You must visit me in the spring. <laughs> With joy. The misty mountains contain precious few goblins to worry my animals now. Farewell. Farewell, Beyond. Farewell. Farewell, Gandalf. Farewell, Elven King. Farewell, Beautiful. Oh, farewell. <laughs> farewell, Good Wood Elves. Farewell. Farewell. Uh, Elbow. Yes, yes, coming. Goodbye. <laughs> By midwinter, Gandalf and Bilbo had come all the way back along the edges of the forest to Bjorn's house, where they stayed for Yuletide and indeed for many weeks after. It was an early spring morning and a fair one with a bright sun when they finally took their leave of the ancient and strange creature. Yes, and with regret, I might add, for though I longed for home, Bjorn's house had been so warm and merry and safe. It was on May the 1st that the two came at last to the brink of the valley of Rivendell. The high elves came out to greet them and led them across the water to the house of Elrond. Gandalf the Grey. And welcome, Bilbo Baggins. The burglar, I believe. Oh, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Elrond. There are many eager ears waiting to hear of your adventures. Ah, well, uh, but first, I... I have news for you. The necromancer has at last been driven from his hold in the south of Mirkwood. Necromancer? By the wizards and masters of law. The same. You knew of this? Uh, let us say I had a hand in the happenings in the south. Ere long now, the forest will grow somewhat more wholesome. The north will also be free from horror for many long years, I hope. 
Yet I wish the necromancer were banished from the world altogether. Oh, the it would be well indeed. But I fear that will not come about in this age of the world. Or for many after. Now for your tale. Yes, and no, miss no. nothing out in the telling, mind. No, you. no, no. Well, well, uh, 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 um, well oh. it all began nearly a year ago when I called on Mr. Baggins yes. here. Yes. One tea time with 13 dwarves led by yes. Torin Oakenshield. Yes. I may say that the Hobbit wasn't at all pleased to see us. Well, I mean, well, they, you they just... You weren't, you weren't. was told there were other tales and yet more tales tales of long ago and tales of new things and tales of no time at all till at length Bilbo's head fell forward on his chest and he snored comfortably in a corner fell from me in that place and I had many a merry jest and dance early and late with the high elves of the valley yet even Elrond's house could not long delay me now and I thought always of my own home after a week therefore Bilbo said goodbye to Elrond and rode away with Gandalf the elves songs and light voices following them on the morning breeze story. The day came at last when the travellers were in sight of the country where Bilbo had been born and bred, where the shapes of the land and of the trees were as well known to him as his hands and toes. Coming to a rise, he could see his own hill in the distance. He stopped suddenly. Roads go ever, ever on. Under cloud and under star. Yet feet that wandering have gone turn at last to home afar. Eyes that fire and sword have seen and horror in the halls of stone. Look at last on meadows green and trees and hills they long have known. My dear Bilbo, you are not the hobbit you were. Ah. <laughs> no. <clears throat> no. No, no, <laughs> no. No, 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 Come on, come on. Come on, Gandalf. Come on. Some years afterwards, Bilbo was sitting in his study 
writing his memoirs. He had just oh. settled on the choice of a title. No, I shall call it, um, uh, uh, The Hobbit. No, it's a bit bold. Uh, um, ah! There, and back again, a Hobbit's holiday. <laughs> holiday? <laughs> what a holiday. <laughs> no? Oh, I wonder who that can be. Oh dear, I'm a bit of lobelia. I wonder if I ought to put my ring on. Oh, I'm a bit of a whiskey. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, Gantown. Oh, good to see you. Come on in, come on. Thank you, Bilbo. <laughs> I, I've brought an old friend to see you. A friend, an old friend? Hello, Mr. Baggins. Barley, there. Well, well, my dear Barlin. <laughs> come on, come on, both of you. Come yes. in. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, hang your coat uh, up. Hang my coat up. I yes. know where. Yes, you know, and you know, yes. too, no, no, no. Hang your coat up. Come on. I'll straight down here. You remember? <laughs> you know where to go. Very yeah. well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, well. What? Mm -hmm. You look, look here. Um, here, by the fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Sit yourselves down. Go on. Just pick up. Yeah. Uh, make yourselves comfortable. Thank you. The kettle won't be long, and we'll all have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> and a slice of seed cake, eh? <laughs> oh, um, fill your pipes, gentlemen. Thank you, Bilbo. You are quite well. Hmm? Your waistcoat is a little more expensive. What? Oh, <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Yes, well, your beard is several inches longer, isn't it? Yes. Now, tell me, how are, how are things going in the land of the mountain? I, I think of you all. So often. I am happy to say that things are going very well. Good, good. The lake men have rebuilt Dale, mm -hmm. the valley is rich and fertile, and the desolation is now filled with birds and blossom in spring and feasting in autumn. Ah, ah, Much wealth goes up and down the running river and the lake, mm -hmm. and there is the greatest of friendship between men and dwarves and the wood elves. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I'm so glad. But uh, what a bard. How's he? Hmm? Bard is the new master of the lake men. Gee. And very popular. For, of course, he gets most of the credit for the present prosperity. Oh. <laughs> they are making songs which say that in his day the rivers run with gold. Well, then, the prophecies of the old songs have turned out to be true. I mean, you know, after a fashion. But, of course. And why should they not prove true? Well, I mean, you it's don't just, it's really just a... suppose, do you, that all your adventures and escapes were managed by mere luck? Just for your sole benefit. No, 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 but I mean... <laughs> You're a very fine person, Mr. Baggins, and I am very fond of you. <laughs> but you are only a little fellow in a wide world, after all. <laughs> Thank goodness, eh? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's the kettle. Come along, I'll make it you. Gandalf, Phil Bo appears. Uh, uh, writing. Writing yes. what? Cheat cake on the left. Hobbit and Bell on the right. Well, he would never get the publisher. And Bilbo took to writing poetry and visiting the high elves. And though many shook their heads and said, poor old Baggins, and though few believed any of his tales, he remained very happy to the end of his days. And these were extraordinarily long. We 